Hey everybody and welcome to Kids Cradles Nursery. This is our first live stream and it's been interesting trying to get on here. Um, <laughs> YouTube has given us quite a bit of trouble. Um, so I'm just gonna sit on here and wait for everybody to join on. Hi, Honesty, how are you? We have um, only a few people on, this just started, so we're just waiting for everybody to log on really quick. Hey there, how's it going? How's everybody doing? Happy Saturday. <laughs> Good, what are you guys all up to this weekend? Hey, Reborn family, how are you? <laughs> Everybody already waiting for the free Reborns, <laughs> for the giveaways, right? Uh, where did you go shopping? I'm gonna grab a baby really quick. I have um, baby Rylan over here really quick that I wanna pick up. He's being fussy, so we need to we need to hold him for a little bit. Um, I am a reborn collector and artist, so um, let me unplug you here. So I'll show you um, the room that we're in right now. We are in my studio and my nursery, so we've got kind of uh, my setup here and then um, this is the nursery so um, I'm not sure if I can flip my cam on here oh yeah I can hang tight all right there we go so yeah everybody we're in the um, nursery slash studio so this is where I keep all of the babies um, this is where Ryland's chair is but I have um, the crib full of babies. This is my collection. This is my personal collection. And I've got a little silicone baby over here. This is baby Nathan, and he's the newest one in my collection. And I'm holding baby Rylan right now. But this is my um, photography studio um, area over here. And then we have the art studio on this side in this corner. So as you can see, I'm working on a lot of babies right now. So I'm going to flip around real quick while we wait for everybody to join in. And this is my first live, so bear with me because we might have some glitches along the way. <laughs> but you learn and live, right? Oh, thank you so much. Thank you. Um, so this little one is baby Rylan, and he is actually a baby that I created. This is the Tobia kit by Laura Lee Eagles, and he actually reminds me of my son, so I couldn't let him go. <laughs> so he's staying <laughs> in my collection, but this is the only baby that I've kept so far that I've created. Uh, all of my other hundreds of babies I've sold, so he's so cuddly. I just love how he feels when I hold him. He's just the cuddliest baby. So if you're looking for a big, he's like three to six, three to six months size. He's a big boy. <laughs> and um, if you're looking for a three to six month size baby that's really super snuggly, this is the one right here. The giveaway was a long time ago. Um, that was when I hit a thousand subscribers, but we will do more giveaways on my channel. I've done several. So, um... I'll announce it way ahead of time when we do giveaways. The giveaway baby was a while ago. That was like 2,000 subscribers ago. When I hit 1,000 subscribers, we did a giveaway baby, but I will be doing another giveaway and I'll announce it first. Thank you so much. So um, who out there is a Reborn collector? And is, are there any artists that are subscribed? <laughs> Somebody had the wrong channel. <laughs> uh, 
Um, I don't know when I'm going to do a giveaway. I usually wait until I have a baby that I have in mind for a giveaway. And usually it's when I hit a milestone. On YouTube, we do a big giveaway. So I'll announce it. Oh, all right. I see we have some collectors and artists on here. <laughs> um, so if anybody has a YouTube channel, because I noticed that I have a lot of um, followers that have a YouTube channel. If you have a YouTube channel, feel free to put it on there so other people can um, check out your channel. Um, I'm doing a couple of videos coming up in the next couple of weeks, and those videos are on becoming a reborn artist and um, doing a reborn YouTube channel. So if you guys um, watch those videos, I'm going to have people, especially on the becoming a YouTuber, I want people to be able to list their channels um, down below in the comment section so other people on my channel can check you out because I'm having a really hard time. Um, finding some good reborn channels that don't have a lot of drama on those channels. I don't want any drama on my channel, but I'm having a really hard time. Um, there's a lot of reborn YouTubers that have kind of um, stopped doing videos recently, like Kelly Maple. She went off to college. Good girl. Um, a couple of my YouTubers are having babies, and that's great. They're moving on in their life, but... Um, they're not putting out any videos. One of them is now um, doing like a family vlog channel. I think two of them are. So if you guys know of any great YouTubers out there that do reborn um, vlogs or you guys have a channel, put it on here. Oh yeah, definitely. The drama, just, just stay away from it. Like if you see drama on a channel, just do not comment. Just I click off and I just don't participate. And anybody that tries to start any drama on my channel, I just use that delete button and that block button. So you just got to stay out of it. I know, I know. Even I started off on Facebook before I started on YouTube and those Facebook rooms are crazy. So I just, I did my own um, Facebook page and I just stick to that. <laughs> I do sell in a lot of those rooms, but I don't go in there and like really get myself involved anymore in any of those rooms because it gets crazy in there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, good. Anybody have a positive reborn channel? That's the key right there. Put it put it down below in the comments or um, wait for my video this week. We're going to be talking all about that. Oh my goodness, yes. <laughs> Kayla, yes. I'm not going to say anything. <laughs> if, especially if you've been watching that channel this last week. It seems like drama follows that channel everywhere they go. It's like right and left all the time. And I just have to like go away for a while and not watch it. Um, I was a big fan for a long time. But it just seemed like drama, drama, drama. <laughs> <laughs> oh, everybody is so sweet. I get the sweetest comments on my channel. Um, everybody has been really good. I only get a couple of trolls here and there, and then I just try to delete and block them. But you all have left like the sweetest comments. I love talking to you guys every single day, and I thought it would be so fun to do this live because I could talk to you guys, answer your questions, and um, we could all kind of get to know each other a little bit better. <laughs> Thank you so much. Hey, Sandy Brown, how are you? <laughs> yeah, definitely. Um, shout outs on my channel. I love to do shout outs, but I have Merry Mail. It's in the description below all my videos. If you click on that down arrow, it'll give you a description. Um, I have Merry Mail. So if people want me to do shout outs, like if you have, um, if you're selling anything reborn related or you have, um, any kind of reborn social media. I don't care if you're on Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, whatever. Shoot me a merry mail, just a, a letter or whatever that you want me to read on camera during one of my videos. And I will give you a shout out so that people can follow you and stuff. I can't, I don't even know how to pronounce that. You want me to give you a shout out, but I don't know how to pronounce it. It's like Malexix. 
Hey. <laughs> hey, Jennifer. Alessandra. Okay, okay. Is that how I say it? Am I saying it right? Alessandra. That's a pretty name, though. And Sandra. Thank you. Oh, yeah. Inspired by babies. You have a channel? <laughs> Um, I do. Okay, so let me put this little handsome guy down. I need to change him into some pajamas. So I'm going to start off, don't judge, because I'm going to show you some of my babies. I'm having a question about whether um, I create all my own babies. Um, the answer is no. I mean, I create them to sell, but for my own collection, it's really hard for an artist to um, keep their own work. I find that I tend to focus on any mistakes Mistakes. Well, not mistakes, but just like I hyper focus on things that I would want to do different on them instead of just loving on them and enjoying them like I am this one. But I've noticed as my work gets better, I want to keep it. <laughs> I've wanted to keep every baby over the last two weeks, especially. I don't know what's going on, but um, I really absolutely have been loving my work and there's nothing I can pick apart about it. So um, it makes me want to keep it whenever um, I have things about a baby, a certain detail or something that I go, oh, I should try this next time or I should do this different next time. I tend to focus on that and then I don't want to keep my work. I want to sell it because I'm not just enjoying it. And when it's somebody else's work, um, I don't do that. I don't know why. Even if like as an artist now, even when I was a, a collector, I didn't notice things as much. But now I'm an artist and I notice a lot of thing about another um, artist's work but I don't pick it apart. It is what it is and it's beautiful to me and I don't care and I love it. But for me, I'm hypercritical of myself, I guess. And I focus on that. I don't focus on that when it's somebody else's baby. So I'll show you my collection, hang tight. So that was a really great question. Let me flip this camera real quick in case you're just joining me. Okay, so this room that I have here, this was our spare room in our house, and I'm gonna start over here. Um, this room started off as just a reborn nursery. Um, it was completely a nursery, an entire nursery. And so um, when I decided to become like a reborn collector, which my collection grew very fast. So this is my current collection right now are these five babies right here. These are all vinyl reborns and they're all done by different artists. These two are twins and they were done by the same artist, but not at the same time. I did them a year apart. And um, so these were all done by other artists and these are babies that I have a connection with, each one for a different reason and story. Um, and then this baby is my newest. This was my goal was to get to a full body um, silicone reborn. And this um, baby was not done by me. This was actually done by the amazing Kat Johnson with Kat Creations. Um, she's on Facebook if you want to find her. She actually has another Cal Calamero sculpt that she's working on right now. And this other baby here was Rylan that you saw me holding. Um, this little boy I kept just because I had a special attachment to him. I think he looks a lot like my son. I actually have a picture of my son when he was a baby. So he looks like this little boy right here and I can't let him go. <laughs> so he is the only baby that I've created that has remained in my collection. I keep babies for a while and then I always end up selling them for one reason or another, but this little one is staying for now. I will be doing another one of him shortly. His kit is on back order. I ordered it and paid for it already and they didn't send it. Um, so they're waiting for that to come in. So I'll make another one of him. But um, these are the babies on my table right now in my studio. They're all at different stages. So I work on quite a lot at one time. Um, for me, it makes it easier because if one baby is drying or I'm baking babies in my, my family calls these my easy baby bake ovens. If you're a kid from the 80s, you'll know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Um, but instead of an easy bake oven, they call it my easy baby bake oven because I bake the babies in the oven. So, um, yeah, so these are all in different stages in case I'm varnishing or doing hair, like I'm in different stages of hair on these ones. 
And so um, while others are drying, I can be doing details on these guys or painting skin tones on these guys. So I'm gonna flip you around here. Okay, I hope that answers that question. So all of these babies that are on my table, I create to sell. They will go up for adoption um, unless I decide to keep them, which has been a problem lately. <laughs> so that's um, one of the, ho the hardest, hardest parts of being an artist is not wanting to keep all the babies in your collection. Um, right now I'm doing vinyl vinyl babies. I have a question here about um, silicone versus vinyl. With everything that's going on, there's not a lot of room for selling silicones in the community right now. Um, they're thousands of dollars. So I don't really want to invest in that right now and people don't want to pay for those right now. So right now I'm sticking with the vinyls. I have everything to do the silicones except for a kit. I don't want to invest in any silicone kits right now, but when things pick up in the economy and it's looking a little brighter for selling dolls that are worth thousands. Of so for me to spend a thousand dollars just on one kit is a, a lot of money. So for right now I'm holding off on the silicone babies and, um, I'm focusing on the vinyl. Speaking of silicone, I'm going to go grab Nathan really quick. Okay, so this is little Mr. Silicone Nathan here. He is my second full body silicone. I did have a little girl, but I unfortunately had a very bad experience with the artist and that a good connection with her because of that. So pick your artist wisely because if you have a really bad experience, that's all you're gonna think about every time you see that baby. So I sold her and I bought Mr. Nathan here. He's such a cutie pie. And don't judge, I have my babies still in their Valentine's outfits because um, I'm waiting to wash all the clothes for St. Patrick's Day and dress them in those. And um, somebody was like, why does he have white hair? <laughs> it's blonde. When you buy rooted hair, this is the color you get for blonde. So it is more yellow in person, but um, I just say he's a toehead. My hair was white when I was born, so <laughs> it's fine by me. He's very fair skinned like I am. Um, I was born blonde hair and blue eyed and my hair got darker as I got older. Um, so, but I looked like this when I was born. So thank you. Thank Tammy. Hey girl, Tammy just got a baby from me. <laughs> I don't know what baby I'm doing for the giveaway, uh, or when I'm doing my giveaway. It's when I get inspired and I look at a baby and I go, okay, I definitely want to use this one. And I start planning my giveaway from there. Um, sometimes I don't always do giveaways with babies or reborns. It may just be um, like a Paradise Galleries doll that I've redone and reborn or a Behringer doll, or it might just be reborn items. Yes, how's baby Jade? Baby Jade arrived to her new mommy today and she's on here. Oh, thank you, Jennifer. Oh, thank you so much. Adi does videos. Hey, do you have a channel? Oh, thank you, Tammy. Thank you. Um, Tammy got uh, baby Jade today and is very excited. Um, I A lot of the comments that I get from people who, who purchase babies from me is when they arrive that they notice that the babies have a lot more details to them than what you see on camera or on video. I'm going to plug in my phone here. Hang tight. Um, I get that a lot, like, whoa, the details are crazy because you just can't pick it up on camera. I really do put a lot of details into the babies and you don't see it until you get them. When when they arrive, you really see how much um, work is put into them. It's kind of a shame. I, I feel gypped sometimes, like not always, you know, recognized because it's hard to get some of those details, those fine details to show up on film. So not a lot of people notice um, all the work that you put into it until they 
just decide to purchase and the baby arrives and it's a whole nother world. Hi, Elliot. How are you? Oh, good, good. I'm glad I was able to inspire you. I get messages a lot about people who are inspired to either do videos or collect reborns or become artists. And I love that. I absolutely love that. That's amazing. Did you put your silicone doll pacifier? Um, this little baby does take silicone pacifiers. Um, they have to be cut. So it's like he takes a modified pacifier, if that's what you're saying. <laughs> I am working on tutorials. Okay, so I'm doing a series and I only have two of the videos out. It's um, washing your kit and getting it ready and, and getting it. Uh, you got to get the oils off of these kits when they show up. They have um, oils from the factory on them. So I, I have a video that shows that. And then um, I did part two the other day where I showed you how to use a primer. Before you start painting, you have to use a primer. So if you go, a lot of people don't realize I have like 200 videos because some people are just discovering my channel. So um if you go on my main page, if you click on Kids to Cradles Nursery, it'll come up at the top showing um, like videos and playlists. If you go under videos, it has like 200 videos on there for you to watch. Um, if you go under playlists, I have different playlists. Like I have playlists set up just for my silicone babies, for reborn holidays. I have a hauls playlist that has like, a million hauls on there if you like watching haul videos but i also have a diy playlist for you guys set up so you can learn to make magic milk bottles um, how to seal bottles how to do magnetic pacifiers and in there is also my tutorials that i'm starting on how to make your own reborn i haven't taken nathan he's new i haven't taken him out for an outing yet i just did my um First outing, you can see the video. It's when I hit 3,000 subscribers, I decided to do an outing. I don't normally do outings because it kind of freaks my husband out. So <laughs> um, I got really brave and I did do an outing. I've tried to do a couple of outings, but they were a fail because it like poured rain or something happened. But I figured after 3,000 subscribers that I was going to go ahead and do one for you guys. And I actually was in my own neighborhood, which was scary because... Hi guys, hi Addie, oh Tilly, hey, hi guys, thanks for coming. Oh, I'm so happy you're here. Addie has, Addie's Pumpkin Reborn Nursery, she has an amazing channel. She's a, a younger subscriber and she has um, got a great YouTube channel, go check her out. It's okay Addie, we're just talking. I did enjoy doing an the outing. The first outing I did was like a week ago and it was amazing. It was so fun. Um, what I didn't expect was that everybody would be so nice to me because they thought I had a baby. Like people were, let me get that for you, ma'am. And they were like opening doors for me and don't lift that. And <laughs> it, was, it was an unexpected surprise for sure. I wasn't expecting that. That was the part I wasn't expecting. And I always told myself that um, he's so heavy, by the way. <laughs> if you do end up getting a full body silicone baby, they are stinking heavy. Oh my goodness. Thank you, thank you. I need to change him. Um, I was gonna say too, um, a lot of people, um, have asked why I don't change my babies every single day or why I don't change them very often and As an artist, I'm gonna let you know whether it's especially if it's a silicone You have to be extra gentle with them Their paint can come off really easily and I'm gonna do a whole video on what I needed to know before I bought a silicone or things You might want to know before you buy a silicone baby. He's heavy. I'm gonna put him on the desk here <laughs> um, So you can't change them as often as you would a vinyl doll, but even with the vinyl babies, um, the vinyl babies you still don't want to change very often because eventually they're varnished. I varnished my babies really well, 
And I get into that too on one of my videos. I've received babies that have no varnish and I don't know if those artists thought I would not notice that. They didn't know I was an artist, but um, I varnish my babies really good. But the more you change them and handle them and play with them, the quicker their varnish and their paint will wear off. So you have to be really careful, you know, unless you want a shiny baby, um, you don't want to dress them all the time. Now, I enjoy my collection. I love dressing my babies. I love doing photographs and putting them on social media and doing videos with them. That's just how I enjoy my collection. I love holding them and snuggling them. I'm sure you guys do too. Um, my dolls aren't just put on a shelf for look at purposes. Some people do their collection that way. They just want to look at them. But I thoroughly enjoy them. And luckily, I've learned how to um, do the artistry part of this. And I can touch my babies up if I need to with um, varnish. If I notice them starting to get shiny, if you notice their feet especially and their fingers, those are going to be the first to go. If you're starting to notice a shine to them, it means they are not um, varnished very well anymore and you need to get a touch up done. Yeah, that's fine. You can dress them once a week. That's what I pretty much um, started off doing. And um, I noticed though that once I became an artist and I'm so involved in all these other babies in the room that um, I'm gonna disconnect here. I have you guys plugged in. I noticed that I don't play with my own collection as much. And I had about 20, um, babies in my collection um up until about a uh, i would say december the end of december early january i had about 20 babies in my collection and i sold um some of them to buy little nathan here because he was my most expensive doll ever and um i'm gonna turn you guys around here hang tight thanks jennifer um so i had this shelf right here was all full of reborns. And then I had several um, different places that I could put all my reborn dolls. The crib was full. I couldn't even like lay down these babies and it was just too much. I felt like I really needed just to narrow it down to the babies that had some really special meaning to me. All of these babies have something special about them, a reason why I have them. And um, I just really wanted to keep the babies that I tended to really want to pick up and hold. If you don't like reach out for a baby for a long period of time, it's just sitting in a chair. Um, it probably needs a new mommy. <laughs> um, let me put Nathan down because he's so stinking heavy. Hang tight. This boy is like holding a real child. <laughs> so... Um, yeah, I figured I probably would need to, um, find new homes for those babies because it just wasn't fair that I wasn't enjoying them and some other mommy would. Now, if you're worried about that, because a lot of times I struggle with that and I think if I sell a baby that I'm going to want it back later and I have gone through that a couple of times. So what you might want to do is put that baby away for a while, like wrap it in a blanket and put it somewhere out of your nursery and just see how you feel about it. If you are not finding yourself missing that baby, it's time to probably um, put that baby up for adoption. Um, has anybody else ever struggled with um, selling a baby after you've sold it? Did you guys miss that baby and regret it? I've only done that a couple of times. Um, Jose, I'm not sure which, which baby you're talking about. I have a silicone doll. Yep, that's who I was holding. Um, these babies are vintage babies. These are Berjusa dolls that I have in my nursery. And um, this is a Behringer doll that I recently, she's not vintage, that I just recently, this is Lily. Yes, Tammy, baby Lily. Um, love her. Um, if you guys are looking for a baby, go watch the video on um, baby Lily. If you want something that's around $35, she is not a reborn, but she is amazing. I'm enjoying her. She's so freaking chunky. Um, and then these are my Cabbage Patch Kids. These are my childhood dolls. So I have them in my nursery as well. 
And um, this little baby, I had one just like her that I passed down to my daughter. This is also a childhood doll. Um, but yeah, I collected dolls my whole life. I collected por um, porcelain dolls in my teen years and then um, moved on to Paradise Galleries dolls, Ashton Drake dolls, and then eventually sold those two collections to pay for my first reborn. This little guy right here, he's the one that started it all, you guys. This is my first reborn right here. This is baby Brayden. Yeah, um, Flo, yeah, if you are ready to purchase a reborn doll and you have another collection that you don't really um, do anything with anymore, um, yeah, that's what I did. I sold probably about 10 dolls from Paradise Galleries and used the money to purchase my very first Reborn. I had been watching Reborn videos for about a year and then um, really wanted one, but I wasn't sure if I wanted to invest. So that's what got me started on the Paradise Galleries and Ashton Drake's. Yes, Tammy, I still have Sue Lynn. I do. She's in another room. <laughs> I have another nursery <laughs> room. Um, it's where I keep a lot of my um, babies that are completed. I have like a cubicle shelving unit in there. And I keep all the finished babies that are up for sale in there. But Sue Lynn's in a, a special bed in there. Um, where do I sell my dolls? I sell my dolls. Um, I list them on Instagram. So go follow me on Instagram. I have hundreds of thousands of photos on there. I've been doing Instagram since I was a collector before I was even a reborn artist. Um, you can find me at Kids to Cradles Nursery on Instagram. I sell on Facebook, Kids to Cradles Nursery. I sell on reborns.com. Do not mix that up with rebornedolls.com. That's not a good place to go. And I'm not going to say anything after that. Just do not go there. But reborns.com. I'm on. No, I don't sell them. I'm a carry. Um, reborns.com, Facebook, and Instagram is where I list all my babies. I used to list on eBay, but that's become a really scary place. And I did not like all the fees I was being charged. It's Kids to Cradles Nursery everywhere you go. I'm on TikTok. I'm on. And I've only done about five videos on there. Um, like I said, I'm on Instagram, TikTok. Oh God, I can't name off all the places. <laughs> Facebook, YouTube. It's always Kits to Cradles Nursery. And, um, I spelled cradle with a K on purpose. So it's not cradles with a C. So don't type that in that way. Um, my husband thought that was crazy, but I, I don't know. I liked the way it looked and sounded. So that's the name of my nursery. Um, so what's everybody up to this weekend? Oh, thank you so much, Elliot. I hope so too. Um, I did have an Etsy at one point in time and, um, I really liked it on Etsy, but once I started to get new camera equipment and started doing photography in my photography studio, I got a really good camera and with all of my, like my iPhone 12, my MacBook, it can't handle that. It can't handle the gigabytes or whatever. I'm not really techie, but it just, it, I couldn't download photos on there. So I was having trouble listing babies on there. It was a real pain. Um, and that's how I got on YouTube too. I started off on Facebook and I had thousands of followers on there. And I really, um, during this whole pandemic thing, Everybody was like furloughed at home and really wanted to see videos. They were all bored. So that's how I started doing videos was I was trying to entertain everybody. And um, yeah, the Facebook couldn't handle my videos. It couldn't, it couldn't handle it. They were so fuzzy and a mess and you couldn't really see the babies. So I thought, mm, I'm going to go on YouTube and do videos. And then I could just copy the link from the YouTube videos to Facebook. And then... Um, I don't know, Face uh, YouTube blew up. <laughs> so now I'm just a YouTuber now. Hey, Naomi. Yeah, I'm not leaving yet. We'll stay on here as long as every, I, I'm seeing more people joining on. So we'll stay on here for a while. No worry. Bye, Honesty. Thanks for coming.
Okay, so um, we have a new Reborn Collector. I'm gonna tell you, if you want advice, go look at my video about avoiding Reborn scams. That is gonna be the first place you wanna go if you're gonna buy a Reborn is to watch that video. You definitely want to avoid scammers. There's a lot of scammers out there and it's killing artists. It was killing me. The last two Christmases, I made like no sales because Christmas is like our biggest time to sell Reborns and everybody was buying off of those scam sites. Oh my God. What's it saying? It was saying trying to reconnect. Do you want to bring it out, out here just while you're yeah. trying to reconnect? Yeah, I'm losing people. Oh, there we go. Hey, can you guys see me? Okay. For some reason, my internet went out and I lost a bunch of people. Um, yeah, I do make toddler reborn dolls sometimes, but they can't fit in my ovens. Um, the biggest baby I've ever made, I think, was three-month Joseph. He's very chunky. 12-month um, size, and I've done seven-month June. Okay, guys, thank you so much for sticking around. Okay, people are joining back on again. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't do too big of toddlers because I, I can only bake in my oven like one to two pieces at a time. It makes it really hard. I love June. Um, so many babies that I love doing are not available anymore because of the pandemic. So a lot of kit kits are gone. Hi, Danielle. How are you? Thanks for joining. So I'm gonna show you guys my ovens here. This is, I, I use Genesis heat set paint. So these are the ovens that I bake the babies in. I have two of them. You have to heat them up in between layers. Like you can do a few layers and if you like it, then you bake them for eight minutes in these little ovens and it sets the paint It makes it permanent. So if you're painting a, a reborn say I do a couple of layers on one of these babies and I don't love it you can wash it off but when you bake it it's permanent so um, this is who I have right now I keep getting um, messages today especially and yesterday on who I'm doing on my table so right now I have Saskia she's a pretty popular one I'm getting started on her I have tink is very popular um, this is gonna be a cuddle baby this is by Linda Murray I believe that's the Joe kit. And then I have Georgia, who's also going to be an open-eyed cuddle baby. And then I have the twins. These are Twin A and Twin B by Bonnie Brown. And they're pretty popular, too. They have their belly plates as well. Yep, you see a Saskia. I'm doing Saskia for the first time. I've never done um, any of these kits ever. These are all new kits. Um, these are leftover Realborn kits from Bountiful Baby. When the pandemic started, I was worried that I would not be able to get a hold of all of my supplies. So I charged up a credit card pretty high buying supplies so that I would have what I needed to get through the next year. I did this last January 2020 when I knew everything was hitting. And um, it's been over a year and I've still got quite a few of these kits that I had purchased a year ago ahead of time to make sure that they lasted a whole year. I still have probably about 10 of these kits and I am now ordering from McPherson's Arts and Crafts. I've moved up to some higher end kits, some more expensive kits. So you will see my prices probably going up and having a bit of an increase because these kits cost twice as much as the ones from Bountiful Baby. Um, if you're starting off as a new artist, you probably want to go there to buy kits because they have some kits under $50. But um, now Bountiful Baby, they've increased their prices quite a bit um, on their kits. And it got to the point where by the time I purchased the kit and paid for shipping and taxes and a body um, for that baby, it was adding up to be almost the same price as these higher end kits. Um, so I took the plunge and bought, uh, I'm going to say about 20 of those. Hi, little Ohana Nursery. Yeah, I do. I love I love the McPherson kits too. I do have Reese. Reese is still available. I actually made Reese last week and that baby is completed and on my Facebook page. So if you're interested in Reese, he's ready to go. He's ready to ship. 
you can look at his photos on, on my Facebook page, Kids to Cradles Nursery, and let me know. Um, Jennifer, are you doing Levi? I love Levi. I have a Levi kit, too, that I'm going to do. He almost ended up on the table, but I decided to hold off on him till next time. Oh, my closet. Do you guys want to see my closet? It's it's organized chaos in my closet. <laughs> a lot of it in my closet, though, is for babies that are going home as well as my stuff for my own collection. Do I still have lavender? Flo, lavender is on a payment plan, and I will let you know if it does if they don't continue to make payments if she goes back up for adoption. I recently started um, offering a payment plan. I really hate doing payment plans, but um, sorry, I'm reading. <laughs> um, I hate doing payment plans, but I have three babies that all ended up on payment plans. I think it's like Alma, Lavender, and Kyrie. They're all on payment plans. The closet tour. Okay, everybody's wanting the closet tour. Enough with my face. I don't ever show my face on my videos. I will make cameos every once in a while. Okay, so we're going over here to the closet. So let's, oh, let me give you guys a view. <laughs> it is organized. I do know where everything is in my closet. I'm a, like a neat freak. So um, I'll start maybe at the top. <laughs> so this is all bathing stuff for baby Nathan. I have all his bath stuff in there because he's a silicone and you do have to bathe them. Um, this is my uh, Merry Mail box. So all of my Merry Mail that's been sent to me, I save everything. I've got some diapers up there. I have regular magnetic pacifiers. I'm obsessed with pacifiers. Is everybody else obsessed with something? Usually when you're a collector, you're obsessed with something. And mine is pacifier and diapers. Um, and these are all my silicone baby um, pacifiers. You have to use silicones for silicone dolls. So those are those. Um, these are all like different kinds of diapers that I'm using for babies going home and for my own babies. And um, these are preemie diapers. Um, this is like a little lamp that I used in a video. It's like a nightlight lamp for the nursery and then this is all like camera equipment i have my beats more camera stuff so um this is all of my clothes for my collection my own collection these are a lot of the pajamas and stuff that i have um i kind of have it by size more than anything i have like all the preemie and newborn and zero to three month sizes up here um i have the hangers like boy and girl so you can see like the boy stuff and the girl stuff this is mostly pajamas on this side and this is all mostly outfits like rompers and stuff on this side um right here is baby nathan's box and i just got this this is new this is a rooting pillow that i had made so when i root hair on babies which y'all know i hate doing <laughs> um i have a little this is baby Nathan, my silicone baby's box. He has to have his own clothes because you can't mix silicone and vinyl together or they'll have a reaction. So he has his own box. Um, this is all of my clothes for all the different holidays. So I have all the baby's holiday stuff in here. I have, guys, I'm obsessed with Hello Bello and Honest Diapers. So that's like a whole entire tub full of all different kinds of um, pattern. Okay, so I got to stay out of the closet because apparently my signal is like terrible in there, but I'll try to finish up. So um, I have the clothes all separated by sizes for bigger babies and then for newborn um, girl and boy over there. So and then this tub here is like belly plates and stuff like that. So yeah, I pretty much know where everything is in this closet. Like I said, it's organized chaos. Um, I'm going to this is my. Um, like my hamper for like dirty clothes and stuff. But this bag here is a travel system. Um, I'm gonna do videos on my travel systems. I have several travel systems um, in a closet next door in my other room. Um, I have like a stroller and car seat set that I got for Rose Doll Show. I was gonna go to Rose um, in 2020. I had plans to go to Rose, anybody else? 
and it got canceled. Um, I also have a carrier so that at the show I could carry babies. And that bag that you saw in the closet, I had that specially made. I'll do a video on that and where you can get one. It's amazing. It's um, called a reborn um, bassinet bag. And you can carry your reborn in this bag that's amazing. And put it has all kinds of pockets and stuff that you can put like diapers in and clothes in. And um, it was so I could carry a baby on the plane with me because I didn't want to lose the baby. Yeah, I know. I heard that stinks too. This year too. So I had bought several travel systems so that I could go all the way from Florida, all the way to Rose Doll Show across the country. And um, I think they're in Utah, Salt Lake City, Utah, somewhere around there. Correct me if I'm wrong. Um, but I had this special bag created just for that. And I'll, I'll do a video on all my travel stuff because I still use all of it, like for outings and stuff like that. <laughs> Flo will fly together, Flo. Oh, good. Funny TikTok. Uh, hey, do you have a TikTok? Oh, yeah. Everything's been canceled. Um, a good place to go to if you're just starting out, go on Facebook Marketplace. I started off getting a lot of stuff on there. So much stuff there. And um, Once Upon a Child. If you guys have a Once Upon a Child in your area, go there. Um, Goodwill, do not be afraid to shop at Goodwill. You can find like brand new carriers and bouncers and things like that. Like dirt cheap, $5, $10, like super cheap. I love Once Upon a Child. I haven't been there in a while because it's in a couple towns away from me. It takes me a while to get there. But yeah, I'm not afraid to shop at like Walmart, Target, local thrift stores for my own babies. Oh, Declan's a really cute name. Did anybody get a new reborn for Christmas? I love Christmas time. It's so fun to get reborns for Christmas. I love Once Upon a Child too. I I go on their website first and I'll look to see like on a Saturday if they're having any kind of special sales. And um, I'll go up there and I'll buy like $50 worth of clothes, but it's like bags full of brand new clothes that are all name brand. I love that store because everything is like mint condition. There's nothing on them, nothing wrong with them. And they're all like Gymboree, Carter's, Oshkosh, like all the big name brands. You got, you got June. I love June. Oh yeah. Oh, good, good um, comment, Jennifer. Um, she got a silicone from Ashton Drake. Ashton Drake, I always forget to tell people, you know, silicones are really expensive. And even though Ashton Drake is like manufactured dolls are not hand painted by artists, they have really cute partial silicone dolls. Does anybody know if Ashton Drake, I haven't been on their site in a really long time. Um, do they do any full body silicones yet? Does anyone know? Um, I I love Ashton Drake. My only beef was that with them was whenever I order a doll, it takes me months to get it. Does anybody else have that problem? Oh, Bethany, yay! Oh no, no full bodies yet. They really need to try to come out with something because people are so tempted to buy full body silicones from like we're gonna say companies from China that steel skulls i'm not gonna say the names but you all know if you find a silicone doll for um like a brand new full body silicone doll for like a couple hundred dollars don't buy it it's not it's not real it's not good it's mo more than likely a stolen skull bye funny TikTok. yeah yeah save up for those silicones and get them from a real artist like I said, I had a really bad Yeah, yeah, I noticed the internet's acting crazy. Um, I had to pay a ton of money to um, upgrade my internet service. Um, long story about that. But it, it's not always as fast as they said it was going to be. I was going to have music playing but I'm just trying to um, keep up with this crazy internet right now. Hey. 
Yeah, yeah, be careful. Walmart is like all manufactured dolls, and there's nothing wrong with manufactured dolls. I, like I said, I started off collecting um, Paradise Galleries and Ashton Drake, and um, I really loved those dolls. I, I don't mind. Like, I, I have dolls that are not reborns and they're my favorite dolls They're and I make reborns and those are my favorite dolls <laughs> so there's nothing wrong with them hi Melinda hey there um yeah if if you don't have um the money or you're a younger collector and you don't have reborns it's okay I, that's how I started out I started off because you know those some of those companies have a payment plan where you just pay $25 and they send you the doll and you just make like three or four payments of $25, but you get the doll before it's um, paid off. They send it to you right away. As soon as you pay that that first payment when you buy, you get that doll. So um, that's how I started because I only had to pay $25. So I would pay that doll off after a couple months and then I was like, okay, I'm not making payments anymore. I have this beautiful doll and I would go buy another one. And that's how the collecting started with Ashton Drake and Paradise Galleries. And then eventually when I got up to like 10 dolls, I thought, well, I could sell these on Facebook Marketplace and buy a real Reborn. So that's how I got my first Reborn. And it was um, Brayden here. So this is the guy that started it all. How could you not love this little Face. Oh my God, he's my fave. Don't tell any of the other Reborns. <laughs> but yeah, he's a sweetie. So cute. I love this little guy. He's one of my favorites. So he started it. It's all his fault. <laughs> this, this, all of this, all of this. Brayden, this is all your fault, Bubby. <laughs> All of this is all little Brayden's fault. This face I could not resist. And by the way, this baby was done by a newer artist. Um, and she did a really good job. He's, I, I have no complaints. I've, I've bought, I think he was only $250, by the way, because it was a new artist. And he's beautiful. And I've had no problems with him. And I think I talked about in another video, um that I don't have, a, um, yeah, I do have a favorite sculpt. We'll get to that. But I talked in another video about how I have bought some very high-end babies up to $1,000, and there were lots of problems with those babies, and I had to do a lot of repairs on them, and that's crazy because this was my first baby, and there's nothing wrong with him, and I paid $250. So sometimes you can find beautiful dolls from new artists that are just starting out, and they're not very expensive. Um, so my favorite sculpt is Levi by Bonnie Brown, and I have a, Le a Levi in my collection. Um, Y'all know I don't really like rooted hair because it's a pain to me to keep up with, but this is um, my little Levi sculpt. So yeah, he's my favorite, I think, because his little limbs curl up. Um, I just love his limbs. He's beautiful. Is it worth it to buy boo-boo dolls? Um, I... It all depends. Okay, so I've been on the boo-boo sites, the boo-boo doll sites, and some of those dolls are really, like, they've been through several mamas. They may be really worn out, like, really older dolls. You also don't know what you're getting. I think I did a video with what's inside your reborn doll. You don't know what they've put inside that baby. <laughs> Um, so be careful on those boo-boo sites, but I've heard a lot of really good stories. I've had friends that purchased on there and a lot of us artists are very OCD and we focus on details. I think I talked about that in the beginning of this live, why I don't keep my own dolls because we hyper focus on stuff and something that we might feel is a boo-boo or it doesn't look perfect to us. We criticize our, our own work a lot. And so a lot of times on those boo-boo um, pages on Facebook, if you don't know what I'm talking about, there's um, reborn boo-boo pages on um, Facebook or there'll be like $200 and under reborn pages on Facebook where people sell their dolls. But I've had a lot of friends buy on those pages and um, yeah, you have to be careful.
I think my video is lagging again. So yeah, I've had friends that have purchased on there. Thank you so much. They can't find the boo-boo. They asked the artist, like, where is the boo-boo? And they can't see it at all. It's just the artist is just being hypercritical of their work is all. Yeah, I would say if you're just starting out, if you're not sure if you want to invest in a reborn, if, if you want to pay um, a lot for a reborn, you're not sure if you're going to love this hobby, that was a really great way for me to start. What size does Twin A wear? It depends on the artist and how much they stuff the body. Um, when I first got my Twin A and B, they definitely wore preemie size. But um, I did have to take them apart. And I did end up um, adding a little bit of stuffing and reweighting to them. And now they can wear preemie size, but they also wear smaller newborn. So if I can't find something in um, preemie size for them, they can fit some smaller newborn size. Wash your clothes first, guys, too, before you dress your reborns. Wash your clothes because the ink on some of the clothes, the dye can leak onto your reborns. But also, I find that if I wash my clothes and then dry them on high heat, it shrinks a lot of those like really nice cottony baby clothes down and they just fit my babies better. Yeah, Liliana, if I wash um, like a smaller newborn size, if I wash it and throw it in the dryer, it will shrink it down to where it will fit them perfect. So they they wear some um, preemie and they wear some newborn size, but they're they're like a smaller newborn size. Yes, yes, Sandra. Be careful on eBay. Yes, ask for lots of photos. If um, somebody's only showing you one or two photos, something's wrong. You, I, I list my babies with at least 20 to 25 photos. Definitely. I, I show everything. What kind of irritates me, and this is a good way to irritate your artist, <laughs> is when they do post like 25 photos and you ask for more detailed photos. And let me tell you, I show every stinking detail. Now, if you're asking for a photo, like somebody asked me the other day, I didn't realize I didn't, I usually take the bow off the girl's hair so I can show all of their hair in photos. And on one of my babies, I must've forgot to take that headband off. And somebody asked me if I could do some more photos of her hair and like what it looked like without the headband. And that, that was totally necessary. That was fine. I had no problems with that. I don't mind questions. Your artist should answer your questions. Um, one of the artists that I said that I had a really bad experience with, it was because it was my first silicone and I'm an artist, but you know, this is my first like buying an expensive silicone doll and she would not answer any questions. If, if I, if she did, she, she would take like weeks to answer my questions and get back with me. And it was like important stuff. Like, did you receive my payment? Like for weeks, I was asking her, like, it's showing on my PayPal that I paid you. And she was, it was a doll that was not made yet. So it was going to take her six to eight weeks to make the, the silicone doll. And I, she wouldn't even answer me back to let me know that she had received my payment. So I'm sitting here going, you know, <laughs> did you receive my payment? Because it's been four weeks. And I don't know if you're making my doll. It was insane. Um, and if she did answer back, it would just be like a one answer, like no, yes. It was like very, and I'm an artist, so I wasn't like getting on her nerves. I was like, um, hey, excuse me, can you please get back to me? I'm so sorry. I just want to make sure you got my payment. I was like so nice, and she was not responding. It wasn't until I finally um, said, listen, from one artist to another, I need to know if you got my payment because I need to call PayPal and then cancel this payment. And once she realized I was going to cancel my payment, then she reached out to me. And like I said, it was like a, a one word answer. Yes. <laughs> Choose your artist wisely. Your artist, if they don't answer your questions, I don't want you to like annoy them. Hey, Honesty, welcome back. Don't annoy your artists. Please don't like bombard them all day long. They're like trying to work and paint babies. And if you take up two or three hours of their time, they can't, that, that's, that's work that they've lost, a whole baby that they could um, be working.
Yep, I have uh, two new cuddle babies coming. Melinda, I have two cuddle babies on the table right now that I just showed earlier that I'm in the process of. So yeah, I'll have I'll have um, two cuddle babies coming and I made sure I bought kids. I'm glad my videos make you happy. I hope that this channel is a safe and happy place for people to go. Like I, I said, Um, Melinda, yeah, we're doing, Melinda, um, let me show you what I'm doing. Everybody wants to see babies I'm working on. So I'll show you these babies again. Yeah, Melinda, I have two cuddle babies coming. This one I'm working on and this one. Um, I haven't gotten started on them yet. They're just drying. And those two will be available when I'm done. And I made sure I picked out kits that could be boy or girl. Um, for those of you that want to see twin A and twin B, they're also on the table. This is what I'm working on. Um, twin A and twin B by Bonnie Brown. And then I have Tink and Saskia. Tink is teeny tiny. Look at her little tiny limbs. She's going to be itty bitty, little tiny preemie. She's, look at her compared to Saskia. She's so little. Um, so yeah, I have a Saskia coming and then I'm getting ready to finish up, um, ever. I think somebody was telling me they wanted an ever kit. I'm working on her still. This is uh real born Joseph asleep, newborn size. They're not available anymore. These are all like sold out kits from Bountiful Baby that I got a year ago. I explained that earlier. This is Lulu. This isn't like the Lulu that everybody loves that I made. Um, just because that was something we were going through earlier today. So, um, the internet keeps going in and out and it's been about an hour and we did good for our first live. Um, I hope you guys have enjoyed it. Um, but a lot of people are getting ready to leave and probably go to bed soon. So <laughs> yeah, it is buffering too much. Um, you never know what's going to happen with your first live, so um, we're going to have to figure that out. We'll work out the bugs before the next one. What is the latest sleeping kit you showed us that you're working on? Um, I have several. Which one? Is it the Cuddle Baby? Let me see. This little guy is Joe by Linda Marie. And it could be a boy or a girl. I can't say little guy. And then um, I have twin B. And twin A and twin B can be, um, they can be boy or girl. Um, they can be girl, girl, boy, 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 girl. It doesn't matter. Unisex. Most of these reborn babies can be changed. They're all, all um, pretty fluent. Oh, we're back up. People are back on. Okay. As long as we have people, we'll keep going. <laughs> um, most, I think I did a video too on changing the gender of your reborn. You can change it. If you guys get, um, if you guys get a baby and you're just not bonding with it, I, I would say try to change these baby not plenty of times before I've seen people turn Levi into a girl. I've even been known to put a bow on his head just to see what he would look like. Um, twin A and twin B can go either way. Just pop the bow off of her head and she looks just like a boy. <laughs> Same with this one over here. This is the Maria sculpt. She was my trade. Guys, be careful with that. I did a trade. It was the scariest thing I've ever done. Um, has anybody else ever done a trade and it gone bad or gone good? I was going to change this guy into his pajamas. Let me go in the closet and grab his stuff. Um, I'll probably change him once we get off the live. But um, I, was, I was thinking I was going to probably do a changing. But with all the lagging and stuff going on, um, I thought I was going to change Rylan into this little diaper here. And then I have this little chicky onesie for him. And I have this little Carter's pajama set that I've never changed him into. It's like a mustard yellow that I think would look really cute on him with a little rhino. And I meant to put this on him in the fall and forgot, guys. <laughs> and then I have this cute little pacifier I think will match. It's a yellow one. So he's going to go in that tonight, I think, for bed. Um, be careful with the trade. Uh, watch my video. I explained too on there how you can go about it a little safer, safer, go through PayPal and actually do a transaction between the two of you. Um, 
you can go on there and say like, say your dolls are each worth $350. Go on PayPal and pay each other $350 for those dolls. Um, you're not really paying each other because it evens out. But, you know, you know, if you pay that person $350 and they pay you $350, then you've not paid anything. But it leaves a paper trail at least. And that way you're safe. If, if one of the dolls doesn't arrive, you can claim it through PayPal. If something happens in the mail or whatever, you've got a paper trail. I would say don't do a trade unless it's with somebody you know really well, like somebody you know really, really well. Um, the girl, let me grab this little baby. She's not on here tonight, but I actually became really close friends with this baby's mama. Um, so... I had someone who wanted one of my babies that I had created and she didn't have the money for that baby. And um, she was gonna sell this baby in her collection to get the money to pay for him. And when she showed me what baby it was, I had been looking for this baby for forever and couldn't find it. This baby, the reason why I have her is she was the first reborn I ever saw. This is how I got introduced to reborns. I had never seen one before. And this was the first baby I had ever seen and really absolutely fell in love with and adored. And I wanted one of her ever since. And when she told me that she was selling this baby, the reason why I couldn't find it is because it was a sold out limited edition. I couldn't find the kit anywhere. And she had this baby and was like, I'm going to sell this baby to get your baby that you created. She wanted a little boy that I had created. And, um... I was like, no, you're not. <laughs> and I swore I would never do anything crazy like that. But we had been talking for about a year. I mean, we had been in the same like Facebook groups and stuff. And um, I threw it out there. It was totally my idea. It wasn't hers. And I'm like, you can do this or no. I don't know if you trust me that much. But um, if you want to, we can do a trade. I will gladly take her into my collection and give her a forever home. I think I was her third I want to say third mommy and um yeah she's been with me ever since I'm not letting her go she's one of my forever babies <laughs> yes thank you Liliana I love her too she's such a cutie this um bow is not staying on her head but she has amazing painted hair her artist did this like curly wavy hair on her and I thought this was freaking amazing, just amazing. And she's got that newborn look to her. Like, I really love all the little flaws and specks and little boo-boos and baby acne that she has on her face. Now, um, I have played around with that with some of my babies. I've done birthmarks and stork bite and... Um, I've done like milk bumps and all that stuff. And I find it harder to sell those babies. Not everybody wants all that stuff on their babies. So even though I learned how to do it and I made several babies like that, I stopped doing it because they were harder to sell that way. Um, do you guys like like the baby scratches? Like does that, to me that seems more realistic. Like I feel like she is so realistic with those little scratches and baby acne and stuff like that. Um, do you guys prefer that or do you prefer that perfection, like the perfect baby skin, like my baby was born via C-section and has no boo-boos, like, yeah, I love that. I just think it's more realistic. I like the milk, milk bumps. I like the scratches. I like the baby ac acne. I just think it's realistic. Uh, you like the perfect baby skin? I don't. I'm not knocking that perfect baby skin either because most of my babies have that in my collection. They don't have all of the realistic um, baby features to them. And I love them. I love them to death. Some of them do have like the stork bite, but I buy babies that are perfect too. Thank you. Okay, so milk bumps, um, real babies are born with that on their nose. It's just their pores are clogged with... Um, they have like a vernix on their skin when they're born. It's a white layer on their skin when they're when babies are born and it makes them really slippery so they're born a little bit smoother and they get those little clogged little white dots on their nose. It's basically clogged pores. <laughs>
And so um, they, if you look at all newborn babies, they have little white dots all over their nose and we call them milk bumps. It's like when we call that little birthmark, it's basically from the baby hitting the one of the mother's pelvic bones that they get a little, I had one when I was born, it looked like a little red check mark. We call it stork bite, like the stork that delivers the baby bit them. I told my daughter it was an angel's kiss. My daughter had it too, and I told her it was when the angels kissed her goodbye. Yes, Liliana, it's like it's kind of like clogged pores. <laughs> yes, we paint clogged pores on our reborns. <laughs> I like it though. I worked in labor and delivery and NICU and did pediatrics for a really long time, and I did the mother baby unit as well, where moms and babies were recovering together. I worked in the OR and did C-sections and all that stuff. So when I was in nursing, I worked very closely with babies and they all have this stuff. Does anybody else um, work in childcare or work with babies? Where did I get her from? She was part of a trade. I got her from another reborn mama and I was told we think I'm her third mom. And I did a whole video, so go back. If you go under my videos, you can watch. Um, I traded my reborn doll, and it will talk about her artist and her whole story. So you can go back and watch that. Um, honesty, I'm sorry, what was your question? Hi, Georgia. Um, did anybody else work with kids um, in their careers? Um, I've been interested in babies and kids my entire life. I worked in daycare for a while when I was younger, wanted to be a teacher, and I was tossed up between the medical field and teaching. So, And then realized in the medical field I could work with babies and kids there. wonder if I could fix it. Um, do you have a baby that needs repair, Melinda? You have a boo-boo? Um, I don't know what um, reborn artists do repair. I don't do repair. Um, I don't do repairs because I don't like to mess with other artists' works. And I'm also afraid that if something happens in transit or if, um, since it's not like something where we can do a payment through PayPal that would like cover the baby... I just worry if a baby got lost in the mail after I repaired it or like how would I insure that baby and what if somebody didn't like the repairs I did or if I altered it like I worry that maybe um they may not like the result or something or um the honesty girl does she does repairs yeah the repairs scare me I'm just so afraid that um, if I alter a baby and somebody doesn't like it, or they can say that I ruined their baby, there's a lot of like dishonesty out there and scams. Like I can get scammed too as an artist, not just as a collector. Um, people can accuse you of all kinds of things. So it scares me. I don't like to do it. I only touch my own work and that's it. <laughs> I don't touch, I don't want to alter either because if you do repairs, people want you to make changes like root hair on babies. And I hate altering another artist's work. I don't like doing that. I try not to. The only thing I do with my own babies is like if a magnet is not put in right or it's a weak magnet from another artist, I'll fix that. If their body is deflated, I can restuff it and reweight it. If they don't have varnish, I'll varnish it. It's not anything where I'm altering the look of their doll. Um, someone was asking me if I feed the babies, like I feed them a bottle. I don't, I don't do role play with my babies off camera. I don't think there's anything wrong with it. I think it's super healthy. Um, I don't knock it. I don't do, that's why you won't notice a lot of re, like a reborn role play videos and outings on my channel. I am trying to do it because I'm trying to like make videos where everybody is happy and, and it's, it's material and content that other people can enjoy. Cause I do have like grandparents and parents that tell me, that they sometimes watch my channel with their kids. It's like what they do on the weekend, Friday, Saturday night, when they have them over, they watch my videos and I think that's super cool. So I try to do stuff for younger people or people who are interested in those um, kinds of videos, but I don't role play off camera with my babies. So I don't like feed them. 
Um, I do rock them and hold them and change them. So if you consider that role play, I guess it's role play, but um, I do love to hold them though. I really do. Did you go by? If I had to pick what baby would I take on vacation? Ooh, that's a good one. Probably my silicone, but I'm so afraid to take him out because he's like Nathan is so expensive. So I'm so afraid if something happens to him, be really afraid of that. So um, I really love Rylan because he's a big baby, but when you take a baby out um, and somebody asked me earlier, what's some tips for taking your baby out on an outing? You might want to choose a sleeping baby so people don't notice that they're not blinking. Um, I put gloves on them so that they're covered completely and people don't notice them not moving their hands. And I will usually put them with like a lovey, a blanket. Um, I dress them appropriate for the weather. If it's cold, you're going to want to dress that baby warm or you're going to get looks. And um, pacifier. I usually do a pacifier on the face so people don't notice the face isn't really moving. Did I want air airplane reborn doll? What's an airplane reborn doll? <laughs> I'm not sure what that is. Can you make a tips on making your reborn nursery? I will, I can do a video on how that all came together. And I have plans to do a video on how I discovered reborns, why I started collecting reborns, why I became a reborn artist and a lot of it has to do with my career choice as a nurse what led me to them um, I worked in labor and delivery for many 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 years and it wasn't always a fun place it was not always a fun place there were some sad moments and um, that led me to reborn dolls and making them I had a mom who lost a baby and she told me she just felt so empty like she was going home empty-handed from the hospital like my arms are empty. I have nothing. And um, that really stuck with me. So um, I started searching. I made memory boxes for the babies to go home with. Um, my mom and sister would help me make memory boxes. Um, but it wasn't enough. So I was trying to find something else I could do for these moms who were suffering from um, loss and infertility. And that's when I came across Reborns. How about you guys? What what got you into collecting? Were you and I always collected dolls too. I've like I said, I've always been obsessed with babies, dolls, children. Um, ever since I was a little little kid, so I always knew I would go into some career that had to do with that. I just wasn't expecting to become a a a reborn doll artist. <laughs> Oh, good, Georgia. I'm so glad I got you into Reborns. I'm sorry if I've gotten you addicted to these expensive freaking dolls. <laughs> and um, my husband was about ready to kill me when I started collecting, <laughs> which is why I had to become an artist, too, is because I needed to support my Reborn habit. <laughs> I needed to find a way to make money so he would stop getting so mad at me <laughs> for running up credit cards, buying them. Yes, babies and art. It's um, art you can cuddle. I heard, um, who was it that said that? Oh, uh, it was another YouTuber that I was watching. Oh, Liliana. Yeah, you're gonna want a million of them. <laughs> They're addicting. They are so addicting. Reborn dolls are so addictive. I love them. Yes, Patsy family. Um, I love them. They're so sweet. I love that the parents are involved with her and they've been involved with their daughter doing, um, you know, reborn collecting and reborn videos. I enjoy watching them. And um, I think though that their daughter is starting to get to the age Kelly Maple was having trouble. Like, you know, kids love to bully and there's all this social media and kids really know how to get on and like attack your channel and your social media. And I know that Kelly Maple really got picked on as she got into high school, which I get. And Patsy family, I'm starting to notice the daughter's getting a little bit shyer about being on video. And I hope she 
I don't know. It's up to her. I hope that if she's not comfortable with it, her parents will follow that lead with her. But also, I'm hoping and praying that if this is something she really loves still, that she continues to do what she loves to do despite what other people say. I do have a video coming out too this week on reborn stigma. And we're going to talk about the stigma of reborn collecting and doll collecting in general. So, um, I see people writing. I'm going to look on there. Um, I missed some questions about Kelly Maple and In Love with Reborns. There's a lot of drama with all of them. Um, Kelly Maple stopped doing her videos pretty much because she's off at college. And so she's not really into that. Thank you. Thank you, Audrey. You too. Bye, Georgia. Thank you. This is going good. So we'll probably do some more of these lives. But we'll keep going as long as everybody's on. <laughs> if, as long as people want to keep watching. Um... I wish I could go live. Honesty, let me try to figure out some stuff with my computer, my phone. This is my first live and some stuff happened that I was not expecting when I went live. And you can't really tell what's gonna happen until you actually like log on to do a live video. And um, it was pretty tricky. So I'm gonna make sure that um, I get some stuff set up first. I was gonna have like music on. It was gonna be like a party in here. And it all went to pot, <laughs> but I'm glad I was able to get on. I was scared that you all would be waiting and I wasn't going to be able to hop on here. So, um, oh, let's talk about In Love With Reborns. I love them. I was a huge fan. They've been in the community for like 10, 15 years. I don't know, forever, longer than I ever have. Oh, hey, Sandra, <laughs> you're brave for putting your age. <laughs> I'm not that brave. Um, but yeah, you and I could be sisters, totally. Thank you, thank you. Um, so let's talk about In Love With Reborns. I loved them, I loved Jackie's work, especially, I was a big fan of Jackie. She does amazing painting and rooting hair. Um, her wife, she um, she's a good artist. She's a totally good artist. Um, and she was learning a lot. She was, she was really um, getting really great at what she did. Their channel became huge and awesome, but then there's a lot of drama on their channel, and I just, I kind of kept going back and forth um, with their channel. I would, I would can't, I wouldn't subscribe to them anymore, and then I would like miss their videos, and I would get back on and like start watching them, and they would be fine, and then more drama would come up. So I would like, mm, I'm not going to subscribe to them anymore. I kind of went back and forth with that channel. It was really difficult. There was a lot going on with with them and Bountiful Baby and Kelly Maple and all these people, all these lawsuits and just crazy, crazy drama, like insane drama. And um, I don't know, I just try to stay out of it. I don't comment on anything. Thank you so much, Audrey. Um, I don't comment on any of their videos or anything. I don't wanna get involved in that. Um, I only made one comment. I wrote to Jackie at one point in time and she, uh, we talked back and forth a little bit, but I just tried to be very gentle with her on my opinions. And um, she kept my comments up on her channel because she she reached out to me and said, yeah, you know, you're, you're right about some things and you're really gentle with your comments. So I didn't find it offensive at all. I wasn't trying to offend her at all. I just wanted to let them know, like, come on guys, you've got like little kids on your channel. Just be careful what you say. They have a huge younger, um, following. I have a real problem with that. I just have to say, I don't have as many younger viewers, but um, they have a lot of younger viewers on their channel. So the only thing that concerns me, they can say whatever they want as adults and they can do whatever they want, and act however they want and whatever. But I have a, uh, the only problem I ever have with it is when people have younger followers like Patsy Family, Kelly Maple, In Love With Reborns. Um, the other channels, they're really careful. They keep it PG or G related. Like me, I try to keep everything G. I don't cuss on here. I don't talk. I try not to talk about adult stuff. I have one adult video and I made sure that I do not monetize that video. I don't make any money off of that video whatsoever. And I made sure that it is um, only for... 18 and older. I made sure that that was a blocked video for younger video viewers can't view that video. Yeah, I love Jackie's work. She still has amazing work. I would love to get one of Jackie's babies, but like I said, there's too much <laughs> stuff going on in their, their lives. They've made their channel very personal now. 
Yeah, yeah, I agree, Sandra. I I like to keep it with the babies. I mean, people come people come to YouTube because they um they want something positive and they want to get away from all that craziness and they don't want more drama. We don't come to YouTube to watch drama. At least I don't. I mean, I guess some people do, but um with my channel, I just want it to be a, a place for people to get away from all the craziness in the world. Like I said, that's how I started this channel was because of the whole pandemic and people being furloughed at home and not having anything to keep them busy. They were going crazy. They were going crazy in their house, being locked up. And I thought, oh, I'll just make some positive videos and give people like a, a safe place to go and um, just have something positive and fun to watch. Um, I try to keep everything G, G rated on my channel, very G on my channel. Um, I wish Emily, I wish I had gotten to go to Rose. My first trip to Rose was going to be in 2020 and it got canceled. So I don't have Yoda. Oh girl. I wish I did. I sold all my Yodas. I made like 10 of them and I sold them all around Christmas time. They went like that. Um, uh, I can make more Yodas if I want to, but they were a pain to make. They were really hard. Hi, Honesty. Oh, you're so mature for your age. See, that's what I'm talking about. So, um, I don't, we have like no cussing on my channel or I try to stay away from a, like really super adult topics on my channel because I do have, um, grandparents and parents that tell me that even though, you know, their age... They're over age, they're adult, you know, and they've got this YouTube channel because they're the adults that they do watch my channel with their kids. Yeah, Sandra, yeah, definitely. And I want parents to be able to, if they, if you like to watch my channel and you have kids running around your house, whether you're babysitting or it's your own kids or your grandkids or little nieces and nephews, I want you to be able to put my channel on while you're cleaning or relaxing or chilling. And not have to worry about what those kids in your house are going to hear. And that other channel, you can't do that. <laughs> they've they've made their topics very, um, per their channel is all, it's all over the place. It's all about their life. It's not about the dolls anymore and it's super sad. Am I planning to do a Yoda baby? I might. The problem with my Yoda babies, okay, let me explain the Yoda babies. So they don't, the kits don't come with bodies. They're just like a stuffed animal. Like he has a jacket on and I remove the head and the hands and um, I have to pay somebody to make cuddle bodies for them. And I don't like skin toned. I can get cuddle bodies, but they're this color. They're skin colored. And I don't like that on the Yodas. I want either green or... I've been, a lot of people have been doing green cuddle bodies and I was trying to do something different. So I was doing like spaced themed cuddle bodies and I wanted them to be soft. I wanted them to be like flannel material. So I hired um, a really sweet lady to make them for me. And she just got really overwhelmed. Like the Mandalorian came out and everybody was asking her to do cuddle baby bodies for Yodas and she hated it. <laughs> she was so tired. She's like, I'm not doing any more Yoda bodies. Like I'm done. And so I used somebody else to do my, my bodies for my Yoda babies and for my cuddle babies. Cause I wanted even my cuddle babies to have like really cute, like flannel, like baby themed bodies. And hi, Laura. Thank you. Um, I I've hired a couple other people to do them and I, I'm talking, we're paying like $25 a piece for each body. And I was buying like 10 at a time and I got these bodies in the mail and the joints were not working. They had all kinds of problems and I, I couldn't use them. I couldn't use them. And I didn't want to hurt these people's feelings because these were people that were, um, clients of mine. They had purchased babies of mine. They had, been following me for a long time. We were close. We had been friends and we made business transactions and I just had to let those um, hundreds of dollars go because I wasn't going to use bodies that I knew could possibly break later. I didn't feel comfortable using that on my work and um, I really don't like somebody else being responsible for half of my doll. <laughs> It scares me because my name is on that doll. So I don't want to put that body that somebody else made that could possibly be defective on one of my dolls and have my name on that and have that connected with me. So I just stopped ordering the cuddle bodies for all of my cuddle babies and my Yodas because I couldn't find somebody that was um, doing it correctly. 
Bye, Laura. Thanks for coming. Um, so I've just started ordering um, from regular companies, like the skin colored ones for my cuddle baby dolls. Um, I've started ordering them from like McPherson's and like Irresistibles and stuff like that. Bye, TJ's World. Thank you for coming. Um, yeah, so, because they're reliable. And if there's a problem, I can go to them. You know, I can I can contact customer service if there's an issue and get my money back and not. It's, it's, it's business. It's business between business. It's not business between friends. Um, I pretty much ate it on the hundreds of dollars I spent on those cuddle bodies. I still have them and I'm not using them. I don't know what I'm going to do with them. I'm going to try to find a way to fix them or get them up to par. Thank you, Sarah. Um, yeah, I have them. I ate it because I didn't, I didn't want to cause any waves between people that I really loved. I just think that they were trying to make money during this whole craziness this last year. They were all trying to figure out something that they could do from home and I don't blame them. And, um, I ate it on those transactions because I don't really think they knew exactly what they were doing. And, um, I didn't want to hurt them financially either. I, I know that people needed money this year. I needed money this year. Everybody did. Everybody was hurting. So I just was like, I'll keep those bodies, put them away and figure out something later. And I've ordered new joints and parts for them. So I just, I have a sister that sews. So between the two of us, we'll figure out something with them. But you make a big pillow. Did you make a pillow? Like for a baby or for like you? You sew? Who sews? I, that's a dying art. I wish I could sew. Oh, you made legs for your baby Yoda? Hey, where do we go to get feet? I noticed that some people found feet for baby Yodas. Where do you go to get those? That would be awesome if I could add feet to those Yodas. Yeah, you used to sew. Um, sewing and crocheting is a dying art. And if you can do that, you will sell a lot of baby clothes and baby items if you can sew or crochet or knit. Um, my mom taught me how to crochet and I do know how to crochet. Um, I'm just not fast at it is the problem. How long does it take to root? For me, it takes about 40 to 50 hours for just a newborn size head to root which is also why I hate rooting. It's really um, a pain in the butt. It hurts your neck, it hurts your hand, you're very sore. You work on rooting a head of hair for one baby this size for days and days and days, and I hate doing it. I hate it. Um, in that time, I could be making lots of other babies. To paint a baby is about 50 hours. So if it takes me 50 hours to root the hair on a baby, I hate it because that means it's taking me, I could do two reborns in that time or it takes me twice as long to do a baby. Like if I, if I paint this baby's hair, it takes me 50 hours altogether to complete this baby. If I take another baby and I paint it and I root hair on it, it's going to take a hundred hours total. And that's a lot. And my other problem is the hair that I liked. I like doing like really, I like using really expensive mohair. It's easier to work with and it's beautiful. And it costs like $100 just to buy mohair for them, um, for a small baby, for a bigger baby, like $200. And you don't get paid for that. Really, you don't get paid for all that time. And um, it adds on like an extra $200 just for the hair on a baby. And nobody wants to pay $700 for a baby. Hard to put a magnet in for bows. Um, no, for a baby's head. Flo, I have a special video that I just taped yesterday. That'll be coming out in a week. I have a special baby that I did that um, I'm going to show you guys where you can get it and how you can put it together yourself. It's amazing. There's a kit that I found that I ran across that I didn't know about. And I did a whole video on me receiving this kit and putting it together so you can get one for yourselves. And I did put a magnet in it and I did put a magnet in the head because I thought it would look cute with a bow and I show you in the video how to do it. So watch for that video in the next week. Your Saskia is getting mohair. Saskia looks really good with hair. And sometimes I will root a baby with hair just because even though I hate it, if I think the baby will look terrible with painted hair, 
I'll, I'll root it. I'll take the time to root it, but I never get my money back out of it. I listed a baby for $200 more because I spent 50 hours and $200 on mohair. And um, I had to lower that baby down probably to $400. I lowered that baby way down to the normal cost of a painted hair baby before I was able to sell it. I just can't get my money out of it. Like I end up dumping $200 plus 50 hours of time on a baby rooting the hair. And I, I don't. Oh, this is the Maria Sculpt, if somebody's asking. It's a sold out limited edition. Um, yeah, I'm going to paint Saskia's hair. So I'll show you this little Saskia. I'm going to paint her hair and you can see what it looks like. And if you like it, get it painted. It, it might turn out really cute. I don't know if, if I don't like it, I might have to root her later. You can always root over painted hair. It's fine. You're welcome. But yeah, um, I, if I root hair on a baby, I end up losing like $200 off of them that I've invested in them in that mohair. Nobody wants to pay for it. It's crazy. It's really hard to sell. Um, and I think it might just be this year. Um, it's hard to sell higher priced babies. And so that might be what the problem is. Maybe when things pick up and people are able to um, pay for a higher end baby that's rooted, I might, I might start rooting more. I bought a, a rooting pillow, so hopefully that'll help my neck. Hi, Sarah. I'm hoping and praying that um, things pick up over the next year now that everybody's getting their vaccines and stuff. If we have a channel, we can put, put three. Hi, Sarah. My June kit has alpaca hair oh i've never seen that how is it is it silky or soft do you like it at reborn living dolls is at reborn it, it, she's here she's an artist um i saw somebody po post the comments are flying um are you talking about the patsy families like little <laughs> You're figuring it out. Fun with to toddlers and toothless. <laughs> I'm not giving any more <laughs> hints out. You know what I'm talking about. Okay. Um, somebody asked me about um, the Patsy family's little tiny silicone doll. Um, am I planning on doing little ones? Was that the questions? Like little tiny silicone dolls? I might to start with. Um, I do like... Um, micro preemie babies. I had a micro preemie uh, Salia in my collection and she was beautiful. I loved her. I hated selling her, but uh, she was one of those babies I never picked up or played with because it was so little. Oh, okay. Yeah. Send me a pic of her hair. I've never used alpaca hair. I have used human hair on a baby though, but I didn't like it. It was too thick thick like two the strands of hair were too thick and I did use it on a bigger baby like a toddler baby but it um you could really see the rooting because the hair was so thick you could tell everywhere where I put a hair in where I, I like to micro root so you don't see all the hair plugs synthetic hair I I'm sure I mean I'm that's what they do wigs with right like the doll wigs I'm not a huge fan of the doll wigs although I have had a couple people send me um photos of their babies with doll wigs and I should ask where they're getting them from because some of them are really good it's hard to tell whether um it's a rooted baby or not wow guys we still have a lot of people on <laughs> I don't even know. Are we are we getting we're what an hour and a half in? I've uh I watched lives with In Love with Reborns and they've gone like over two hours. It's crazy. Add a colorful life has a huge coloring channel at Kids Cradles Nursery. Oh, I'm missing it so quick. I wish that the uh, comments wouldn't just pop on my screen and then disappear. I wish they I could scroll. I'm not sure if I can scroll. Nope. I'll have to figure that out later. Bye guys, whoever's leaving me. Thanks for coming. Oh, they have mohair wigs. Maybe that's what I'm seeing. 
How do I wait a Behringer baby? I haven't figured that out yet. I just got my first Behringer baby, Lily, and I haven't tried to take her apart. And I'm actually afraid that if I pull the limbs off of her body that it might stretch the holes and it might be very um, difficult to keep her limbs on. But I'm pretty sure you could probably take the head off. I'll have to look. And then you can wait the baby from there. I'm not going to wait mine or alter mine. I actually love Lily just the way she is. I absolutely love her. I have a baldy, two rooted also, and then the rest are all painted. Who prefers painted hair and why? Like, I love the look of rooted hair. I just hate rooting hair myself. And it's also really hard with some of the rooted hair, like Nathan, his hair gets messed up really easily and I find myself constantly fixing it. That's why I hate rooted hair. Levi, he's made with like a cheaper mohair, but it doesn't get messed up as easily. And um, so his hair is pretty easy to keep combed. It's very thin too, so it stays in place really well. But I love the painted hair because I don't have to mess with it so much. And you can do headbands and hats and bows and stuff. Whereas if you put headbands on your rooted babies or hats on them, it will break their hair off and you'll lose hair on them. It will it'll break them on the outside. It won't pull the hair out more than likely if, if the artist glued the hair from the inside, I glue my hair. Like once I'm done, I use that um, E6000 glue and I go inside and I glue the inside of the head so the hair stays put. Um, so it shouldn't come out when you brush it. But if you put bows and hats on them, like I've been really bad when I first got Nathan, I put little hats on him and um, I probably shouldn't have, but some of his outfits are so cute. Um, but you can break their hair. Their hair will break off. But I I'll, I do a lot of things sometimes as an artist. And I'm like, well, if this happens, I'll just fix it myself. Like, because I can fix whatever. So I'm kind of bad at breaking the rules sometimes. <laughs> do you guys do that? Do you guys put bows and hats on your rooted baby's heads? Because any problems with that? Anybody had trouble with losing hair on a reborn because they did that? Oh, thank you. I do love to style my baby's hair though that have the um, rooted hair. And I did have a baby that I made myself um, and she was a bigger baby and I rooted a ton of hair on her cause she was a bigger baby. And I really loved playing with her hair. I loved putting like little clips in her hair and those little clippy bows and styling her hair and playing with it. And she had so much of it. It was the Shea kit. I don't know if you guys remember my Shea kit. She was so cute. She was one that I kind of every now and again regret selling. Um, but I loved playing with her hair. She had beautiful hair. So I think if I had a bigger girl, like if I had a big Saskia, like a bigger baby, and I could do like a lot of hair, like a lot of dark hair on her that I could play with, I might really love that. I might really enjoy that. Oh, little Ohana Nursery. So it can take me up to 50 hours to root a head of hair depending on the size of the head. And I was just saying, that's why I hate rooting hair. It takes so long. It's so long. And I'm so sore. I noticed if I root a baby one week, I will have massive like neck, shoulder, back, lower back, like my upper and lower back. Uh, my hands will be so sore. It's awful. It's for the young. I'm not a young artist. <laughs> I'm going to save all the rooting for the 20-year-olds um, out there. And... um. I don't know. <laughs> it's not for me. I hate rooting. I hate it. I'm good at it, but I hate it. It takes too long for me to do it. And I'm so sore. I'm getting old. <laughs> yes, I think Saskia would look really sweet with lots of dark hair, especially if it had like some curl to it. Like this color hair. Should we should we see? <laughs> I wish I had a, a painted Saskia. Do you guys like your babies with um, lots of hair or does it just depend on the kit? Like my newborns, I like them with thinner hair, like that newborn hair. And then um, for the older babies, I like them with lots of hair because I think it's just like age appropriate maybe. I don't know. 
Would you guys, I have a question. Would you guys rather, uh, this is an artist to me, uh, you know, from me to you guys question. Would you guys prefer to pay an extra $200 for your baby to have lots of rooted hair, beautifully done? Is it worth it to you to pay the extra $200? Or would you rather just have painted hair and pay less? Oh, don't be scared. Don't be scared to mess up your baby's hair. Um, just make sure you have somebody that you trust, that you've seen lots of their work. Um, Biddy Bunny Nursery is really good. I love her work. Um, I really love her work. Um, she roots really beautiful hair. And I'm trying to think who else that I really, uh, Alicia's Angels Nursery, she roots hair, but make sure you ask what kind of mohair you're getting because I had her root a baby and when I got it, I wasn't expecting the cheaper mohair, but I've grown to love it. Like I said, that, that fuzzier, cheaper mohair, um, it stays in place. The silky stuff that I invest in, if I invest in some really silky, soft, like $200 mohair, like Nathan has, it does not stay in place. It is difficult to deal with. What are some of you guys, what's your favorite artist? Do you guys have any uh, favorite artists that you guys use that are really dependable? Because a lot of people on here are new and they don't know who to go to. I mean, you can go to me, but some people want variety. Like I like a variety in my, like I might love an artist's work, but that doesn't mean I want 20 babies by the same artist. They might want a little variety. So um, if you know of any artists that you absolutely love that you've worked with before that are really sweet, honest people, you know, put it out here so we can see where you get a good wig. I don't buy wigs. Um, I know that Bountiful Baby has wigs, but I don't know how good they are. I know that almost every place like Irresistibles, McPherson's, there's all kinds of places that have wigs. But I don't know where to get like a really realistic looking wig. Yeah, I agree, Rhonda. It, it depends on the kit. Yeah, be care honesty, be careful with the scams. Watch that video. I put a video out on how to avoid scams. It should help a lot. Yeah, unfortunately, there's a lot of scammers out there. I have lost so much money, um, not this Christmas, but last Christmas especially. Um, I did not sell anything the month of December, and then right before Christmas, everybody was writing to me, and they're like, I bought my daughter or whoever, you know, uh, reborn and paid all this money, and it was a scam, and it either didn't come in the mail or it took three months to come, and when it did, it was just like a fake plastic china, like, not even put together some of them were just in pieces in a box like horrible horrible plastic babies or stolen sculpts that were fake sculpts um and then I was rushing to get all these babies that I had created overnighted to people so that they would get there by Christmas I'm so sorry if you got scammed yeah yeah especially at Christmas time is really crazy um, I had my last person that contacted me had purchased a reborn for her daughter and she literally just was sobbing like two days before Christmas trying to get me to overnight her a doll that I had and I, I did and we didn't know if it was going to get there on time and luckily it landed on her doorstep get this Christmas morning at 8 a.m. her doorbell rang and it was Christmas morning. I don't know how it happened. It was a miracle sitting on her doorstep. She called me crying in tears like it came. It came in time for her daughter for Christmas. Thank God. It was so sad. It was so sad to watch everybody. I mean, how many people invested in dolls at Christmas time and, and lost their money and it was supposed to be for a child? Like, let's just ruin a kid's Christmas, right? It's horrible anyway. It's no matter who it happens to. 
I would cry. I mean, there's been a couple times where I thought I wasn't going to receive a baby. I thought I was going to be scammed. I had ordered overseas. I won't do that anymore. It took me over 100 days to get a baby from overseas, and other people had purchased them and got them within 14 days. It was 100 days. Like, my baby was lost at sea. And I had no idea whether she was going to show up, whether I was getting scammed. It was my baby from Russia. And I had no idea whether I had been scammed out of a doll <laughs> or it just got lost. It's scary. It's so scary. And artists can be scammed too. Like, I've had artists tell me that they've made a sale with somebody sold like a seven eight hundred dollar doll and then um the people said that they didn't get it they said that they received a box of rocks and they were refunded their money and then the artist was out their money and the doll because people can say that an artist sent them a doll and it wasn't really the a, a real reborn it was like a fake doll or it was a box of rocks or they got nothing Um, honesty, watch my video. Go under, click on my main page on Kids to Cradles Nursery, and it says home, videos, playlists. If you go under my videos, I have like 200 videos on there, and um, it's it was a couple months ago. It says how to avoid reborn scams, but you can also message me on Messenger on Facebook, and I'll I'll click you the link. Oh, I know. Joseph, three months is out of stock. It's another one of those bountiful baby realborn kits that's out of stock. I had one. Um, I made two of them. I made one a boy and one a girl. And I ended up keeping one in my collection for the longest time. That's another baby I miss. Um, but I ended up selling um, that baby to get Nathan. I sold that baby and Shea. I gave up a couple, quite a few babies. Salia, Shea, and reborn, uh, Joseph, realborn Joseph three months. Um, I got that, I sold all those dolls in January. I sold a lot of babies that I had created um, in my personal collection. That's how I made the decision. I, I had a lot of dolls in my collection and how I was able to make the decision on what babies to sell to get my dream baby and bring him home was I decided to sell any of the babies in my collection that I had made myself. And the reason why I made that decision, no matter how much I loved them, I have Maddie coming. Yes, I have a Maddie kit. I'm gonna do that kit soon. Um, how I made the decision was I thought if I sell the babies in my collection that I have done myself, if I miss them, I can always recreate them. The only problem was like the uh, Joseph three month and I had a Lulu kit, which I really regret selling because um, that kit became sold out limited edition and now I can't get them. Yeah, Maddie's cute. I, um, I have a friend who has a Maddie kit and she's been wanting me to paint this Maddie kit for the longest time for her. And, um... So I'm going to paint it, but she wants it with rooted hair. And the reason why I wouldn't do it for her is because I didn't want to do the rooted hair because Maddie is huge, huge baby. Um, you will love Maddie Kid. It's a big baby. <laughs> and I didn't want to root it. <laughs> so I kept telling her no. And she found somebody, an artist in her um, in her own town that could root the baby for her. So she's sending it to me to paint for her. And just send it back to her bald. So it'll be a bald baby. And then she's going to have it. She's going to pay to have it rooted really with some really good mohair. Expensive mohair. But I also have ordered a Maddie kit um, for me to do from McPherson's. And I just got her the other day. So she'll be on my table soon. You will see Maddie, another Maddie coming. Um, and she'll have painted hair. I'm not rooting that head. <laughs> it's too big. Um, are you getting an awake piglet? I couldn't find the awake piglets. So there are reborn fantasy and alternative dolls out there. And I've done one fantasy doll. It was the um, Elf Flynn and I loved him. He was another one I sold because I had created him. And I do have another one. I have an Elf kit too that I got from McPherson's. And um, so that's a fantasy baby in case you don't know. And then 
we have alternative reborns like Pignet. I think you guys have probably seen like the pigs, the dogs, the cats and things like that. And like my reborn Yodas. Um, the piglets are hard to find. Girl, I couldn't find. I wanted the open eyed, blue eyed one. And there's like one with brown eyes. And I think those are also sold out on um, Bountiful Baby. But um, I... I did find the sleeping piglet. There's one that's asleep and they still have that one. So if you're looking for a piglet kit, like a little baby pig, um, they have the sleeping one still. I think it's called Petal. It's the Petal kit, that little sleeping pig. Um, if you go on Bountiful Baby, you can find it. Yeah, Maddie is cute. I do love Maddie with um dark brown, like curly, big head of hair, like rooted hair. She looks beautiful with rooted hair. And I think my friend thought so too. So she's, that's her dream kit. And she really wants me to paint it. Um, It's her dream to have me paint it. I've done lots of dolls for her, but um. She really wants it rooted, and I don't blame her. When you have a, a dream kit, good night, Sandra. Thank you. You're so welcome. We'll do another one. You wanted to name your piglet Arnold? Yeah, I love Maddie. And when you find that, you have that dream kit in mind that you want, um, you just have to do it. You have to do, like... If you don't get it done the way that you want it done, you will not love that baby. You, we spend too much money on this hobby. You want to love your babies. I haven't had any lag in a while. Knock on wood. <laughs> um, don't buy a kit if you, one of my tips to people buying, um, if you're a newer collector, if you have something wrong with a kit, Bye, guys. I'll see you later. No, she she was my trade baby. I actually did a trade. I did a no-no, something I said I would never do. Um, as I was saying, if you don't absolutely love a baby, don't buy it. You'll regret it later. You have to love everything about it. Do I do AA babies? Oh, my gosh. I, I'm so excited. I got an ethnic paint kit. And I need to find a baby to work on. Um, I was going to use Johanna, the Johanna kit to practice on for um, biracial babies or AA babies. Oh my gosh, yes. My sister wants me to do one so bad. She wants a little girl and she wants it with tons of hair. We both do. We want to play with their hair. And we have a lot of biracial children in our family, little girls. We have tons of little girls and they've all grown up and become teenagers and don't want us to touch their hair. <laughs> so I have a lot of people in my family that especially want me to do them. Um, it's a lot. It's like starting over as an artist um, it's a lot to learn. It's totally different. And, um, I really, I, I need somebody to sit in here with different skin tones so I can like use them as a model. I need some models. <laughs> My cousin is whiter than I am, blonde hair, blue eyed, and she is so white and her children came out so light skinned that they hardly even look like they're biracial. So it's really hard to use their baby pictures and stuff. Night Rhonda. Yeah, I need to, I need to get baby pictures or a model or, and I missed my opportunity. I had a, another family member that had a, um, a darker skinned biracial baby. And, um, I really need to just use his photos, I think. But, um, I wasn't an artist back when he was born. He's three now. And I, I'm so sad. It was a missed opportunity to really check him out so I could get it right. Oh, yeah, it can be a mess. If you don't know what you're doing with biracial and uh, AA babies, you can make a mess of that baby. It can come out really bad. And there's no correcting it. There's like, I don't think there's any fixing those skin tones. I think I'm going to have to start off really light and work my way up. I think I'm going to have to just keep adding tones to each baby as I go. But my biggest problem right now is finding kits that will look good. Um, everybody's like sold out of everything. So all the, the biracial or babies that could go that way, like AA kits, um, they're hard to find. They're really hard to find. 
and that's my biggest problem, but I cannot wait. I And I need to find really good mohair for them too. If anybody knows where you can find some really like beautiful like AA mohair, like I want it kind of like curly and dark and I really need to find some good hair because I want them to have, I'm gonna be rooting those babies. You know I'm gonna root those babies. They're all gonna be rooted because I cannot wait to play with their hair. Do I have a silicone baby in my collection? Yeah, it's Nathan. He's the Calamero sculpt. Um, you can buy his kit at Baltic from Baltic Baby. I want to say that's in Russia or Germany. I can't remember. Um, you can purchase the unpainted kit of him for like a little over a thousand dollars unpainted. Um, but Kat Johnson with Cat Creations, she's totally amazing, and she's the one that painted my kit. And he was my dream baby. Somebody else rooted him, though. His um, first mama, the original person that had him um, done as a, I think he was a custom for her. She does custom work. And um, that mama, I believe, rooted him. Good night. If you're leaving, good night. I'm seeing a couple people leaving. Um, we're going to start to wrap up the live pretty soon. As long as people are staying on and having fun and talking, we'll talk for a while. But um, as people start to slowly drift off, it's getting late. And so we'll probably wrap it up soon. But I did not think we were going to make it this long. I, this has been great. Um, does everybody want me to do more lives? Or was this a good video for you guys? This was my first, so we'll get better. We'll, we'll make more plans, but, um, to do more live videos. And it seems like, uh, the internet's been behaving so far. So, um, if you guys are interested in me doing more videos, let me know. More lives? Okay. Yeah, comment down below. If you want to see more lives with me, we'll do more lives. It's definitely been fun. This was a, a learning experience for me, for sure. Um, I didn't know how I was going to like this or if it was going to go over okay. Oh, I'm so glad you found me, too. Um, I'm a pretty social person, so I was thinking this was going to probably go okay. I can always find enough to talk about. I'm a chatty Kathy. Who else is like a chit-chatter? <laughs> I'm a chatterbox, but it serves me well in certain cases, kind of like doing YouTube and working close with people. Oh, good. Me too. I tend to talk a lot, especially if I get nervous. And if you watch my very first videos, like the first 10... Oh my gosh, the talking. Um, I've been this way my whole life too. I've always been a very social butterfly. Um, okay, good. I'm not alone here. Tell me if you are a chatty Kathy. <laughs> Every report card my mom would get, it would be Misty talks too much in class. Or Misty is a social butterfly. I've heard that so much. But um, it's really worked for me, even in my relationships. Like, just when I think I'm making my hubby crazy, um, he's very shy. Yeah, I ramble a lot. Don't feel bad about that in your videos. At least you're keeping things going and it's not like quiet. <laughs> oh, good. I'm not. I'm Shelly good. I'm not the only one. I don't feel so bad. <laughs> it helps though. Like I met my husband in college and um, he was very like shy and sweet. And if we would go to parties, he would just like sick me in front of him. Yep, it's still going, girl. We're still on here. <laughs> hey, freedom is the choices you make. I see you all the time. Yep, we're here. We're still here. Everybody, we're still here. We're still chatting away. Hi, Georgia. Yay, welcome back. Yeah, it's going crazy. This is crazy, isn't it? Going to wait for the Awake Piglet kit. Yeah, I want to see yours. So find a way to like get me on Instagram if you do get the awake piglet. I want to see yours because I might I might want that one. Oh, me too, me too. I love this idea doing the live because I've been doing YouTube for like 8 months, not very long and my channel's really taking off. And some of us talk every day and we talk on different social media platforms and a lot of you, I love talking to you every single day. It's so fun to get to know all of you guys and meet new people in the Reborn community because we all have so much in common. 
And I thought it'd be so fun to get on here so everybody could get to know each other. Like you all could talk to each other. And I noticed you guys doing that in the comments, especially when I'm rambling on. But I love it because I feel like we get to know each other a lot better. I love this. This is so fun. I was so nervous to do one of these. Um, YouTube wouldn't let me do this until I reached a thousand subscribers and I kept saying I was going to do it. And, um, it's, it's, um, I've had some problems getting on to do a live. I've had some issues with it. I thought I worked out all the kinks, but we're getting there. Me too. Me too. I love talking to you guys every day. I love seeing the comments. Um, everybody's so sweet. I have so many sweet subscribers and there's only been a couple of rude people that I think were like, most of the time, I think the people that, if they make rude comments, they're not in the Reborn community. They just happen to like stumble across my channel and they don't know what the heck's going on and they kind of freak out. And if they're nice about it, um, I see Shelly. Okay. Um, if they're nice about it, I will try to educate them. And like a lot of people have just, they weren't in this community and they've discovered me and talked to me and now they're collectors or artists. It's crazy. They didn't know anything about these babies. So um, that happens a lot, but if somebody's rude, I'm just going to like delete them or delete their comment. Um, I don't block people from my channel very often unless it's somebody really like psycho stuff. I've had some stalkers <laughs> already. Um, if somebody's like crazy psycho stalking me, I will like delete you on all forms of social media. I will block you. Um, this one I got in a trade. I, I did a no, no. It was a really bad. You can watch my video. I have a, I traded my reborn baby video. But yeah, most of the time I'll just silence somebody from my channel so that we can't see their comments. I won't block them. They can still see my videos, but I will just like hide them as a user from my channel so you can't see their, their colorful conversations. Yes. Oh my God, the trolls. Okay, so when my channel was under 3,000 subscribers, I went almost a whole year with not a single like rude person on my channel. <laughs> yeah, like over two hours. This is crazy. Um, I went without a single troll on my channel. And then when I hit over 3,000 subscribers, I don't know what happened. In one week, I got like 30 people. I had to block like 30 people, like silence them from my channel because they were so rude. <laughs> people are crazy. I do. I have stalkers and trolls. That means your channel is doing really good. It means you're you're succeeding. You're you're growing. <laughs> I do. I have people that stalk me on my social media. They do. They will. Um, they want to like talk to you, and they're making all kinds of crazy, insane comments and demands. They will demand things. I have people that demand things like you need to do this. You need to do that. It's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yes, the Mary Mail silicone doll. Yes, yes. Um, that was scary. It was really crazy. Uh, I was surprised that didn't come up in our conversation earlier. <laughs> um, I think that really bothered me because I wasn't expecting a photo. And when I opened the envelope and I saw the photo, I I thought it was a baby that had passed. And that freaked me out. I'm here, I'm sitting here reading this woman. She wrote me this like three page letter, like a sob story. And I'm looking at this picture of this baby. And I'm like, my heart is just breaking. I'm like dying. I'm crying. I was like tearing up and crying. No kidding. And I'm trying to read through all her BS in this letter about her whole life story and all her like problems that she had. And I get that if people really have problems, I'm not trying to be rude or anything, but I'm just kind of ticked off at this lady because I really thought that it was a, a real baby in the photo. It was a silicone doll. And um, I didn't know that. And I was like reading her sob story and thinking she wanted me to make a memory baby for her. And then she starts asking for a free silicone doll. <laughs> and I realized that she was like, this is another doll that I found on somebody else's channel. And I want this doll and I want you to buy it for me and send it to my house. Crazy. Yeah, me too. I have to be careful when I'm talking to people that I know in my family. Like, they'll ask me about the dolls and how my business is going, and I can't, like, get carried away. Yeah, yeah, that's how it starts. That's how you know that's a that's a red flag, a colorful life. That's a red flag for me now. If somebody, they always tell you, a, 
people go, everybody goes through hard times. So I'm not trying to be mean, but, um, yeah, it, that's how it starts. There's like red flags there where they're like, I don't have a lot of money. I'm on disability. I've had all these horrible things happen to me. Yeah. Yeah. Mm, that's how it, that's how it always starts though. And then they want something for free. And that's, that's, it's unfortunate. It ruins things for everybody else. You know, it makes, it makes it really difficult. But that one, that struck me especially hard because I've dealt with a lot of PTSD issues from loss and, um, fan mail. My, I still have my fan mail, Mary mailbox, my PO box. If you go under my info, if you click on my page and you go under my info, it's all under my info, all of my forms of social media and my Mary mail. Um, and also it, below each video, if you, there's like a little down arrow that looks like a white V, nobody ever notices. If you click on that, it'll give my description under my video and all of my forms of social media, including Mary mail is there. Um, and how that started was one of my fans, my first fan, Molly, she's very young. She's the 10 year old that writes to me all the time and sends me her photos. She was the one that started it. I was going to name it Molly Mail, but my husband had came up with Mary Mail. She wanted me to do, uh, there's another channel, um, Aaliyah's Reborn World. I know them really well. Um, her mom and I talk frequently and, um, she does happy mail and I didn't want to copy happy mail, but I had people asking me if they could send me fan mail. So my husband came up, well, how about Mary mail instead of happy mail? And I really should have called it Molly mail because it's Molly that mostly, she came up with the idea and she's the one that writes me the most, I would say. Um, this is baby Ava, but she is the Maria sculpt. She's a, a sold out limited edition kit. And she is, she's beautiful. She's very hyper-realistic. And I, I think I just absolutely love her hair the most. This hair is crazy, incredibly painted. It's beautiful. I love the how um, her artist made it look so curly. It's gorgeous. Oh, cool. Okay, thank you, Sarah. Um, it looks like a lot of my followers have been referred by other people. So yeah, like pop the word around. <laughs> We have room for everybody here. As long as they're positive, don't pass my name on to anybody crazy. I have some crazy people. I'm gonna put this baby down really quick. I'm gonna pop her in the crib. This crib, um, if I have my babies laying down, it fits about five newborn sized babies. So I have my collection is pretty much in the crib. And then I've got little Nathan over there if you missed it. He's my silicone. But all of these babies pretty much fit in the crib. If I sit babies up, I can fit a lot more babies in this crib. Thank you. They all still have their Valentine's Day stuff on. Um, I need to change them into all those cute clothes I got for St. Patty's Day. But I figured it's February so they can wear hearts as much as they want. Oh my gosh, I have so many boys um, now in my collection. One, two, three, four, five boys and only two girls. I have a newborn sized girl and a preemie sized girl. Um, it just worked out that way. I don't know. I think I may be partial to boys. I don't know, but I love dressing up the girls. And I did order a kit on McPherson's that I'm thinking about making for my own collection. Um, she's a bigger baby, 21 inches, and she is closed-eyed baby girl. Um, but she's a bigger girl. She wears like zero to three months. And um, I am going to create that baby and see if I want to keep her for my collection because I do miss my three to six month girl. Um, I bought a body for my reborn piglet. They sell a body and I, um, did a whole video on it. They sell the bodies for the reborn piglets at Bountiful Baby. And, um, I did a video on it and I will edit that video. I need to edit it still and I'll release it in about a week. Um, and it has the number 
I don't have the package for the body anymore, but on the video, it has the number. I'll have to go back and look. I made sure I posted the number um, so that you can go on Bountiful Baby and um, type in the number as like 8840 or something like that. It's like a four digit number and you can type it in and get the correct body for your um, reborn piglet. Hi. Hey, oh, hey, hey, Chris from North Carolina. I took a trip. I have a video on um, a winter vacation that I went on. And I took a trip up there to Franklin. I love Franklin, North Carolina. Where do you, whereabouts do you live in North Carolina? Mm, sometimes, Cassandra, I do know what size baby it's gonna be by the inches. They, when you go to buy a kit, it'll tell you how many inches that the baby's gonna be when complete. And if they are like 17 to 20 inches, they will be like newborn size. Anything under that's gonna be preemie size. Like if it's a 17 and under inch, uh, inch, the 21 to 23 inch babies are like zero to three months. And then um, I know like 23 inches, some of those 23, 24 inch babies can wear like three to six month size clothes. So I kind of go by the inches, but you never really know until you actually put it together. There are sometimes babies that, depending on how they're stuffed or weighted, they might wear bigger clothes or smaller clothes. Um, so... Do you guys prefer bigger babies or smaller babies or preemie? I kind of do. I go back and forth, like a mixture of both or all of them. <laughs> Sometimes I want a bigger baby like Rylan, and then other times I want a little preemie baby. It all depends on my mood. I think that's how the addiction starts with collecting is you're like, oh, I, need, I have a boy. Now I want a girl. Now I need a preemie. Now I need a toddler. Now I need a fantasy baby. Like open mouth, closed mouth, open eyes. <laughs> <laughs> Painted hair, rooted hair. <laughs> oh, have a good night, Colorful Life. Thanks for joining us. We're going to wrap it up here probably very soon, so you're not missing anything. Yeah, I I have a thing for the smaller babies sometimes. Um, also, somebody was asking me about open-mouthed babies. The only ones I know, the really, like, does anybody know of any other kit besides Twin A with the open mouth? I have... Like Alma can take a partial pacifier, like a modified pacifier, but um, get a little Twin A. So Twin A, God, she smells good. You smell so baby. Oh God, she smells like baby. She smells like draft. I love draft. Use draft on your baby clothes and they'll smell like a baby. Um, little Twin A, she can take a full pacifier. I use silicone only. And I put a little, yes, Emmy, I think you're right. But I don't know if it can, she can do a full maybe. I don't know. I put a little bit of powder on my pacifier so it doesn't rub on her glossed lips or her paint. And then um, she takes it just fine. It goes straight in, like no problems. You can um, take her pacifier in and out. Um, what I love about Twin A is she has this little thumb too that she can suck. I love, I have not seen any other baby, I think that's why I love her so much, that you can put their thumb in their mouth. How freaking sweet is that? She's so cute. She can suck her thumb, guys. Like, I love that. And if she's not sucking her thumb, then she can have a passy. Riley, is it called the Riley Kit? Hi, it's a sissy, it's sissy, okay. It says Chris Ortiz, but you say sissy, okay. I love that name. Your June kit, 25 inches. Yes, I was buying 12 month size clothes when I created my June. I made a sleeping June, but I made it a boy. And it was really cute as a boy too. And I, I put that baby in 12 month clothes, they fit perfect. 
Oh, good, good, Bethany. I see that. Okay, good. So it was good that I did uh, twin A details. I like doing details videos too for people. You'll see a lot of details videos on my channel because um, when I got into Reborns, when I was just learning about different kits, I wasn't sure what I liked and what I didn't like. And um, it was nice to watch detail videos on these babies to see what the kit looked like in real life when it was actually done when it was completed, I just wanted to see details, like just little things like that they have a thumb they can suck and stuff like that. Why did I start getting reborn baby dolls? Okay, so I do have a story on Twin A. Um, that's in one of my very first videos that I ever did, and it's um, on memory babies, grieving and loss. So you can look that up, and that's how I got her. This is like the reason why I got this baby. I said every baby that I have in my collection has a reason. And, um, but really it all started in labor and delivery. I worked as a, a labor and delivery and NICU nurse and I worked on the mother baby unit and we um, dealt with moms that have problems with miscarriage and loss and infertility and things like that. Um, so I started looking up ways to help moms of loss cope with the loss of a child and that's how I discovered Reborns and I've always loved dolls and babies which is how I got into that career I've always collected dolls and I wanted to work with babies so that's why I became a labor and delivery nurse so um finding such hyper realistic dolls was just like whoa it blew me out of the water it blew me out of the water and also I think a little part of it too was I wanted a Reborn because I could no longer have any more babies. We had no wish or desire to raise real babies and children, especially teen. I had two teenagers at the time. I did not want any more kids while I was going through two teenagers. It sucked. Um, and I was working with all these new moms and around all these um, beautiful babies every single night when I would go to work. And when I got my first reborn, it was amazing. It felt like so neat it felt like oh I, it felt like I could have a baby forever like these are babies that don't grow up they never grow up and that's why I think I loved working in the nursery and working in labor and delivery um because when I would I would work three shifts in a row I would do three 12-hour shifts and I would work with the same babies for three days until you know from birth all the way until they went home I would follow these babies and when I would come back after having like three or four days off, it would be a whole new set of brand new babies. So I loved working in the NICU and in labor and delivery because I always had brand new, beautiful newborn babies. They were a new batch every single week that I was getting. Um, so I did a video on her, Bethany, you can find out. Um, Jody Gatto painted her. Um, so, yeah, I'm so sorry, Cassandra. My mom lost um, a baby to, um, my brother was six months old and he died of a congenital heart defect that we didn't know existed until he got sick. So I did lose my brother um, as well. So I've we've dealt with a lot of loss in our family and we lost a baby today as well that was um, into the second trimester. So yeah, we've, We've experienced a lot of infertility issues and loss, infant, child loss, miscarriage, infertility. It all runs in our family. We have a lot of problems with that. So, yeah, um, you all have my heart. My heart goes out to you guys. We've experienced, nobody should ever have to go through that. Um, but, yeah, that's how this baby came about and reborning and this whole thing kind of started in labor and delivery. Oh, thank you. Yeah, it's. I feel so bad for my family. They've been trying for five years and um, they've been paying a lot of money to do like infertility treatments and IVF. So they've invested a lot and this is their second loss in just a few months. So, and they don't have very many chances to conceive. So it's, it's rough on them. I feel bad for any mom that's had to go through that. It's terrible. Um, but that is where this baby came from too. I, I had to deal with a lot of that working in labor and delivery and it got to me after a while, after so many years. And um, 
I had a particularly bad experience. So there's um, a video on her in the very beginning of my videos when I first started. It's um, on loss and memory babies and, and you'll figure out the whole story from there. But if you are under 18, do not watch that video. It's I don't even think you can, but I wouldn't advise it. It's a sad video. And if it's a trigger for anybody, don't watch it. I I um, have her. She helped me with a little bit of PTSD issues <laughs> that I was having from that video. Oh, yeah. Thank you, Shelly. Thank you so much. Yeah, I just, uh, my heart's breaking for the mama and the daddy. Like, it's horrible. Um, and we did find out the gender. We were supposed to do a gender reveal party this weekend, and it did not turn out to, yeah. It didn't turn out the way we, we were wanting it to. So yeah, that's that's a sad topic, but unfortunately it's what brings most of us to this community and why we end up with beautiful babies like this to help us with PTSD. They help with depression, anxiety. Um, and I've made several um, babies for Alzheimer's patients as well. They help, um, you know, I did home health for a little while as well, and there were a lot of memory care centers I went to, and they had these reborns there. I mean, I've made, you know, I have a friend that works in Alzheimer's unit, and now I, she was getting babies from, from me. She was buying them from me and using them in the Alzheimer's unit, and they help with dementia. Yeah, great therapy. Beautiful. Yeah. Um, and she... I, I taught her how to kind of make her own reborn babies. I mean, she she got, she got learned on her own, but she got a lot of tips and help from me. She said I was inspiring her to make babies. So um, she makes her own now, and she donates them all to her cause because her she has family members that are suffering from Alzheimer's and dementia. Oh, thank you so much. Um, we're doing okay with it. We deal with this a lot in our family. Uh, unfortunately and um we have a lot of adopted children in our family too so um you know there's a, sh a silver lining we've we've gained a lot of family members through adoption yeah I love the cuddle babies I'm making two cuddle babies right now because I want to give people um an option for a baby that's not quite as expensive I've increased my prices a little bit because my kit quality uh, prices have gone up on these kids. Um, oh, thank you so much. You're so sweet. So I'm making, ooh, almost dropped him. I'm sorry. I'm making two cuddle babies. They're not, they're, I think this one has a little bit of veining on it right now, but they're not very far along. Um, I'm making two cuddle babies so people have other options that aren't so expensive. And they help really a lot. I made a lot of babies that were cuddle babies this year because they're so heavy and they're so good for anxiety and depression. I love the way their bodies feel. They're so heavy, like a weighted blanket. So um, if you have anxiety or PTSD or depression, um, a cuddle baby might be for you. Um, they're also great for women um, who are older suffering from like Alzheimer's and dementia because they might wanna sleep with the baby. The body is soft. It's all cloth body. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I collect all kinds of dolls. Um, I haven't collected Lee Middleton dolls. I really need to look at those. And somebody said they collected Masterpiece dolls. And I've seen a couple of them, but I've never collected them. Um, you buy the kit. Ugh. Yeah. Let me show you. So you buy the kit. The kits come like this with just the arms and like the belly plates and the heads and stuff. And then they, you have to buy a separate cloth body to attach to everything. So um, I paint the babies to look realistic. And then you attach it to a cloth body. I'll show you. So... You know, you have to paint the kits to, you know, these babies are not complete, but you add all the details to them, all the blushing and everything. And then your baby will hopefully look beautiful like this once put together. <laughs> so yeah, you buy the parts, you just get body parts, like blank white body parts and you paint them and then you put them together. We have some new people on here that I don't think know the process of reborning a doll, it doesn't come like this. You have to paint it and put it all together 
and weight it to be super heavy and stuff it to be super soft. So do you send me the kit? No, I don't, I, there's some artists that do customs that if you pick out a kit that you like, you can have it sent to them from the company or they can order it. If you wanna pay in advance, they can order whatever the kit is that you want. Um, I don't do customs. I just buy the kits that I like and do whatever I want with them because that's fun for me. And then um, based on the expense of the kit and your supplies and the details, whether you put in, like I only like to use glass German eyes for my open eyed babies. I don't like the plastic stuff. It doesn't look realistic. Those eyes are $25 a piece. Mohair can be hundreds of dollars. It all depends on all the different supplies, what it costs and the time put into the baby. Once the baby's complete, I decide on a price. And it's it all depends on how in demand the kit is. Is it a limited edition? Is it a sold out kit? Is, you know, it, there's a lot of factors that come into play for a reborn artist. And so I just, I just purchase kits directly through a reborn supply company along with all my other supplies. And I create the babies, put them together. And once they're finished, I photograph them in my... Um, photography studio over here. I have like a photography corner. Let me turn this around. So I have a corner over here with like all my photography stuff and I list the babies for sale um, once they're complete and I list a price. Like once I decide on an appropriate price for them, um, I will list them for sale on my Facebook page, Instagram, reborns.com, that kind of stuff. So, um, yeah, I'm gonna put this little one down here. These babies, I like my babies heavy. So all of my babies are a minimum of five pounds. They can be anywhere up to 10 pounds, depending on the kit and how much it can hold. But yeah, it's, it's hard to hold them for a long period of time. My arm gets tired. Um, but yeah, I will, um, once I decide on a price, I'll list them for sale. And then I just let people buy what I make. I don't like getting caught into customs for a lot of different reasons. It makes it not fun when you're doing the same babies over and over and over and over again. It makes it very tedious and boring. And I wanna do whatever I want. Hi, Mildred, I noticed you. <laughs> um, toothless. I didn't see your question, I missed it. I did, Mildred, hi. Hi, 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 hi. <laughs> I missed a question though from Toothless. Ah, oh, hey girl, how's it going? Are you a student, are you at college or younger? Oh, also, if you notice too, with um, like in love with Reborns, they did a lot of customs and they signed on so many customs that they're not able to keep up there. They can't get all their customs out. They were really struggling for a long time to get their customs out. Some of them are years behind and I don't want to have that kind of pressure. You're younger. Oh, okay. Are you doing like online schooling or are you where you are? Do you get to go to school right now with everything that's going on? Are you doing online classes or do you actually get to go to class? We have a lot of teachers in my family and here in Florida, we have to go to school. All of our kids are in school despite everything. So, and the teachers aren't happy about it. <laughs> oh, do you have, you have six reborns? That's a lot, good. Awesome, you have a big collection. I have six too. And uh, silicone, yeah, online. How many kits do you buy to come? So I will usually try to buy like at least 20 kits at a time. I'll, I'll pick out 20 of my favorite kits and I'll order them all at once and have everything sent to me because I work on so many at once. Like, um, yeah, you can see my table. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I just finished two up, nine, ten. There's ten on my table right now. So I do a lot of babies at once, um, but not 
they're all in different stages. So I have to buy in bulk. I have to buy a lot at a time. The most I've ever bought is 100 kits at one time, and that was last year when I knew the whole pandemic thing was breaking out. I was afraid that um, some of our supplies would not be able to, um, some of the suppliers would run out. And I didn't want my business to die, <laughs> basically. So um, I purchased probably about 100 kits and all of their supplies in order to keep myself going as an artist for the next year. Thank you, my mama bear shirt. <laughs> um, I have a matching cup here too. It's my favorite cup. Thank you so much. Uh, I know you'll, you'll save up as you get older, you'll be able to get stuff. I used to babysit when I was younger and I would save up money for dolls. That's what I would buy with my babysitting money. Oh, I wish I could give a baby to everybody. I wish I could. Um, that's where Aaliyah's reborn channel came from. She's in Australia and her mom and I were in contact for a really long time. She wanted me to make dolls and ship them to her because they do a lot of giveaways on their channel in Australia. Her mom, uh, Aaliyah's mom said that she had a hard time in Australia finding artists, like good reborn artists. Apparently they buy only from like the US. Um, and she does a lot of giveaways on her channel because Aaliyah would love to be able to give her daughter, you know, it was very young, five, I think, when they started their channel. And she um, wanted to be able to give dolls away to everybody. So her mom contacted me and, and asked if I could paint babies and send them to her in bulk. But it was like, there was a lot of issues with that. And it would be very expensive. Just for one baby to go to Australia, shipping is $100. So that wasn't going to work out for her. So I convinced Aaliyah's mom to start reborning and making dolls. If she wanted to give dolls away on her channel, she could reborn them. So she did, and she's doing a great job. If you go to Aaliyah's Reborn World, her mom makes beautiful babies, but she sells them because everybody knows as an artist, once you start seeing how much time and work and money goes into each doll, you spend hundreds of dollars just making them. Like, it's a lot of money, and you can't just give them away. And so they've even learned that on their channel. As much as they want to uh, give babies away, they can't do it. It's just not affordable. You can't just give babies away. So um, if if you are wanting to take part in a giveaway, there's a lot of channels that do giveaways, and I do them on my channel too. Um, so you just have to wait for those giveaways, and they're for everybody to participate in. So... Um, yeah, everybody be nice. Everybody play nice. So we'll continue to do lives. Everybody be nice. Don't ask for free dolls. It's not nice. It's rude. So don't do it. Um, we don't allow that on our channel. Mia, good night. Good night, good night, good night. Everybody be nice. Play nice. Everybody play nice in the sandbox. <laughs> well, what would I name my reward pig? Girl, <laughs> wait till my video comes out in a week. And you'll see. You'll see. I, I've already given away too many hints to a future video. It's a secret. What paint do I use? I use Genesis Heat Set paints. Ooh, my son is calling me. All right. Um, I do use Genesis Heat Set paints. Stay tuned because I'm doing a series on how to paint your own reborn. And I will go over all of my materials and supplies and all that good stuff. Thanks, Mildred. Yes, I have kids. I have two, but they're grown, kind of. They're college age, but not, they're not adulting yet. <laughs> well, one of them is. She's doing really good. My daughter's doing good. She's adulting now. <laughs> it's taken a while. Um, yeah. Thank you so much for watching my videos and for supporting me, you guys. And thank you all for coming. Everybody's still here. Watching, I can't believe this has lasted so long. This is crazy. But thank you guys so much for watching and coming to my live. Thank you so much. Bye. Bye. Samaya, bye. Oh, thank you, Mia. You're so sweet. 
Bye, guys. I think we're going to wrap it up because people are leaving, but we will do another live. I cannot believe how long this has lasted. This is crazy. And I'm an old lady, so I need to go to bed. <laughs> and my son, he's out driving around. He's 18, but he has my car, and it's late. So he just tried to call, and I'm going to call him back to make sure he's okay. Good night, Shelly. I love you too. Guys, thank you so much for sticking around. I love you guys so much. Everybody, thank you for being so sweet and sweet comments. Thank you for supporting me. Thank you for supporting my art, my work, my business, and my YouTube channel. This is insane to me. I love you guys. Bye, guys. Oh, I can't wait to see you guys on the next live. Let me know if you want to see more of these. I'll talk to you guys later. Love you guys. Bye, Teresa. Good night. Bye, Mia. Good night. Bye, everybody. Yeah, I can't wait. David, Terry, what are you doing here? <laughs> Good night, guys. I love you all so much. Thank you so much. This was so fun. Go watch my other videos, and I will see you guys on the next live. You guys take care of yourselves, and as always, take care of each other. Love you guys. Bye-bye.